tracks. He's had two second place finishes in a nationwide cars, knows how to do it. And my final guy, Casey Kane. Kane's got to get it done. He's winless this year, but he has won at Bristol, one win. You heard his interview with Dr. Jerry Punch. He can do it, but he's got to get up on the wheel tonight. Whatever happens, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> going to be a fun one. They've come from all over the country and further away to see this race, the night race at Bristol. And a very special opening ceremony for this one comes to you after this message and a word from your ABC station. Nestled in a quiet valley in East Tennessee sits what is known as the last great Coliseum. With its signature three-story high concrete banks and seating for over 150,000, it is truly one of the greatest sports arenas ever built. Folks, Saturday night short track racing is a NASCAR tradition, and it just doesn't get any better than this. For two decades, this was known as the toughest ticket in NASCAR. The drivers say tonight is the toughest night they will ever have. Before we turn them loose, let's go trackside for pre-race. Ladies Thursday. and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the Tennessee Army National Guard presents our nation's colors. Please join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance led by United States Marine Corps Major Andrew R. Warren. Please join me in honoring our flag and our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as NASCAR Sprint Cup Series driver Michael McDowell offers tonight's invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this amazing evening that we can race. We thank you for this amazing country that we live in. And thank you for the men and women that protect our freedom to allow us to live in this great country. But most importantly, we thank you for Jesus, who gives us life, hope, and eternal life. And we just thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Motor Racing Outreach children as they perform our national anthem. Coming up, 500 laps on the world's fastest half-mile speedway. And with laps here being turned in under 15 seconds, it can get physical in a hurry. And that's why we call it full contact stock car racing. This should be fun to watch. And when we return, we'll fire the engines. Drivers headed to their cars to get cinched up for 500 laps of tough short track racing here at Bristol Stock. NASCAR Spring Cup Series at Bristol, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by KFC, the world's best chicken. How do you KFC? Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. And Goodyear, tires chosen by experts for superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. What a sight and what a night it's going to be here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the night race at Bristol, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, getting ready to rock around the world's fastest half mile for 500 laps with a very important place in the chase, perhaps on the line. Less than seven minutes from pit studio to booth. I think I set a new track <laughs> record. Topside now, joined by Bristol winning driver Dale Jarrett and Bristol winning crew chief Andy Petrie. What is this night like for a driver? Every driver will tell you this is the most difficult 500 laps that they face. 
throughout the entire year. It's just so physically demanding on your body. We've got temperatures starting this race over 80 degrees. The humidity is high. You're going to be dehydrated throughout this night. You're going to have to keep your focus. You're going to have to keep your cool if you want to have a chance at winning this. These drivers are going to face another problem tonight. You know, it's always mentally tough here, but now they're right up against the wall. That's going to create a little extra tension in their body and in their mind as they race around here at record speeds. Yeah, it is very, very physical. It's one of the toughest races I've ever been a part of, even down on pit road. But you have to think about drivers like Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards when they, you think they may have a little bit of edge physically because they're in such top shape. And there's a lot of great drivers that are going to be plenty capable of winning this race. But you think about some of those guys and physical fitness can really come into play here. I know you don't usually mix Shakespeare and NASCAR. I'm going to put a twist on it, if you will. Instead of to be or not to be, how about to move or not to move? That is the question. Yeah, I think you're going to see something a little different than what we saw a year ago here with Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane. Casey Kane made the decision not to move Matt Kenseth, and it was uh, he, he was really close. He had a better car, but tonight I don't think you're going to see this. If somebody has a chance and they're close enough, they're going to try to move that person out of the way. They may even wreck them because it's so much on the line. I wouldn't want to be the guy leading, looking in my mirror, <laughs> seeing some of these desperate guys that need a win. Yeah, certainly it's going to be contact throughout the night. But as the laps wind down, go back to 1999 here with Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. A lot of things have happened. I expect to see this very thing probably a couple of times. There's just so much on the line. And it doesn't matter if you're already in the chase, you want another Bristol trophy, or if you're trying to get in the chase and want that Bristol trophy, you're willing to go to desperate measures, and that could be taking the guy out. Desperate measures, that's a great phrase. I like that. So we'll see how desperate the measures get in the closing laps tonight with that trophy on the line here at uh, Bristol. So how do you? Brought to you by KFC. Some things to watch for and to look for tonight. Yeah, we talked just, uh, we mentioned about the drivers that are locked in already in the chase. So what does this mean to them? It means they have an opportunity to really go out and just perform, try to get another trophy, do whatever they want. If that strategy, if it's moving somebody, can't hurt them. The others are trying to make their way in there and they're willing to do whatever it's going to take to get that spot in the chase. Yeah, we've seen in practice in the race last night how that top groove is the only real good groove to be in. It's tough to pass. You're going to see some split strategies too tonight because these crew chiefs are going to have fast cars that are stuck in the back. How do they get them up front? They're going to figure out a way to make a pit stop when some of the other guys stay out. Then the next time they'll stay out and take the track position. I think you're going to see that a lot. We see it some here and we'll see it tonight. I think it's going to be a really fascinating night tonight as this one unfolds here in Bristol. The crowded grid now begins to be cleared. The drivers buckled aboard their cars. And I'm just curious if this thought in this last moment before the engine starts is different here than it is at most other tracks. Yeah, it really is because of the speed that they're running here. And with if you're starting on the inside, you're more nervous than the driver starting on the outside. <laughs> but there's some nervous tension there too because they realize those drivers are on the inside. They're going to try to figure out a way to make themselves up into that that top lane early on in this race. I've always felt like this race here at Bristol, it was, we go to a lot of night races, but this one has a little different feel to it. It's always been special. This part right now, right before they start the engines, I always get butterflies right before they crank up. Just after the children and the families all sing yeah. the national anthem and so on, and now you have to put all that aside, all the chaos that's been the last hour with all these people crowded into this small space, got to set it all aside and be in your space where you need to be, both uh, in mind and in body, in that race car and get ready to go here in Bristol. There's no other place it's more appropriate than to have a famed ring announcer be the one to get the race started. Let's go trackside and hear it. And now, for the words we've all been waiting to hear, please welcome Irwin Tools Night Race Grand Marshal, Michael Buffer. Race fans, are you ready? Bristol, make some noise, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, this is Bristol. Let's get ready to rumble! Drivers, start your... That was pretty cool. That's it. That's how you get a race started. <laughs> ah. 
So the engines are fired, and indeed, they are ready to rumble on the pit lane here at Bristol. Cars will be rolling out onto the racetrack momentarily. When they're on the pace laps, we'll talk with our ESPN in-race reporter on the night, talk with him during countdown and about his situation of needing the big race from way back in the starting pack. Kyle Larson comes up next. Bristol Motor Speedway, where the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is set to go racing for 500 laps on the world's fastest half mile, our telecast tonight presented by AutoZone. The command being given from race control for the pace car to lead the field off pit road. They'll work their way around for a few parade and pace laps, and then we'll cut them loose with the green flag waving. Three races to go until the chase grid is set. Drivers with wins all locked in, but it's those guys with zeros all bunched so tightly together on points that tonight is so critical for, and a few of them really run well here at Bristol. People like Kyle Larson, who was knocked out of the chase grid last week at Michigan, had a crash in qualifying, starts way back in 40th place. Can he race his way up to a good finish tonight? He's our ESPN in-race reporter. All right, let's see what he thinks. Hey, Kyle, Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you have a copy? Yeah, I have you. What's up? All right, man. Hey, thanks for talking with us tonight here. Uh, let's go right to our mailbag, and Leah from Los Angeles ask you, after Michigan, are you and your team focused solely on winning one of these next three races? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, Michigan definitely hurt us, and then uh, qualifying yesterday didn't help. So we got some work to do with this target Chevy, but um, you know, I think my guys prepared a good backup car for me. So got to owe it all to them to uh, try and get a win today, and um, yeah, it'd be nice to get a win and get locked in the chase and quit worrying about points. I'm sick of worrying about points. I hear you, buddy. Hey, um, with all of that being said, and with that in-car camera, I think we're really going to enjoy watching you make your way forward. So how do you balance the aggression that you're going to need not to get lapped, but the patience you're going to get you must have to be around at lap 500 to give yourself a chance at the win? Yeah, things happen quick here at Bristol, and the leaders will be coming fast. So we'll definitely have to uh, pass as many cars as we can as fast as we can, but without hurting ourselves and... Uh, getting ourselves in trouble like I'm about to be right here under yellow but um, yeah it's uh, it's gonna be some work it's gonna be a long race hope we get to the front fast all right man we're going to enjoy uh, watching you go up through the pack uh, have a great night we'll look forward to talking with you later on all right hopefully uh, you'll be talking to me when I'm up front sounds good like that Kyle Larson our ESPN in race supporter getting ready to go racing here in the Bristol tonight, DJ mentioned onboard cameras. Got some great high definition onboard views for you. Riding with the pole sitter, Kevin Harvick, with our Jimmy Johns on board. Danica Patrick has the GoDaddy onboard camera. 
And Clint Boyer has our five hour energy on board. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. the nationwide insurance on board. He finished second in March here. Jeff Gordon front row starters got our Chevy on board. There's Kyle Larson carrying our Sunoco on board camera. Eric Almirola has the STP on board in a backup car after a crash during qualifying. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the Diet Dew on board camera tonight. It's going to get really noisy down on pit road in a minute. So let's get some stories while it's relatively quieter. Jamie. Well, after 27 tries over the course of 13 years, Kevin Harvick finally got his pull here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And I talked to his crew chief, Rodney Childers. He told me Kevin dug so deep on that lap, you can actually hear his lip quiver over the radio. He also said that car is good enough to keep it up front. Dave Burns? Jamie, if the chase started today, Clint Boyer would be in. The chase doesn't start tonight. And this team knows that without a win and with only a few points to the good, they know they have to stay ahead of the takers here tonight at Bristol. Vince Welch. Despite not having a win this season, Matt Kenseth is fifth in the points, and if the chase began today, he would be in. But that doesn't mean that Kenseth in the 20 will play it conservatively. He starts 16th, and crew chief Jason Ratcliffe knows he's going to likely have to roll the dice to put his driver in position to win a second straight Bristol night race. Doc Punch. The only noise Casey K may be able to hear above the roar of his race engines is that of the clock ticking on his chase chances. With three races to go, Kane knows he needs to win a race or get points. And with this being one of his best racetracks, look for Casey Kane to be very, very aggressive here tonight. Alan. Doc, thanks. And as they come to the green, a quick note, if you're looking for Spanish language commentary tonight, activate the SAP button on your television presented by ESPN Deportes. Competition caution coming at lap 60. Sunsets at 8.09 Eastern time. The checkered flag waves after 500 laps or maybe a few more. Kevin Harvick leading them down for the start of the night race in Bristol. Greg Biffle in that 16, a little slip on lap one, but he gets it back down, just losing a couple of spots. We had heavy rains here overnight, and it washed pretty much all the rubber off of this racetrack. So these drivers are seeing something and feeling something that they haven't this entire weekend. That was Ryan Newman you saw sliding back into the pack as they went down the back stretch. Kyle Busch up to third, Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, 48-99, now fourth and fifth. Kozlowski in the two trying to see if he could make some ground in that bottom lane. It's going to be so difficult to do. These drivers tell me about the amount of grip that is up top of this racetrack where it was ground. That there's just really two or three tenths which is a huge amount on this half mile track. It's been the topic of conversation all week. They had a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race here. Rained out Wednesday night. Ran it Thursday morning. And from there, right through the Nationwide Series race last night and leading up to the Sprint Cup Series race tonight, it's been all about everybody's going to be running up by the wall. How are you going to make some ground? That's where all the talk of strategy and slide jobs and contact and pushing and shoving has is, uh, is gotten so built up. You know, the one thing we didn't talk about that, that we saw last night and we always see here, lap traffic will play a factor sometime tonight in the change of the lead at some point in time. Will that be late when it could affect the outcome of the race? We'll have to see. But as these leaders close in on the back part of the field, we've got a lot of speed back there, so they're going to have a difficult time. Just correct myself before, it was Austin Dillon that had uh, the problems off turn two that slid toward the back of the field, not Ryan Newman. Dillon is all the way back to 39th place. Yeah, he had a pretty significant contact off turn two, and that car does look a little bit like Newman's car, and the paint schemes are similar. 55, Brian Vickers. Picking up a spot on 27, Paul Menard. Vickers, a guy who runs really well here, and one of those guys looking for a win to find a way to compete for the championship. Yeah, I talked to Brian uh, yesterday, and he was uh, very happy with his race car, excited about his chances. Um, just hopes that they can kind of, it seems like every time they have a good race car and that possibility, they have something to crop up and happen to them throughout the race. 
Justin Allgaier, 51, just ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. that you ride with. Junior back in 20th place, about to pick up one spot from Paul Menard in that 27. And we mentioned some guys in backup cars starting at the back of the field. 43 Eric Almarola, 42 Kyle Larson, and 26 Cole Witt. No contact there with Danica Patrick. Yeah, Looks like Danica may call a piece of the wall. They've got to go because leader Kevin Harvick's in clear racetrack and he's already catching the back of the field. Yeah, and we see a lot of times at these races that we get a lot of green flag right early on because they're going to have that competition yellow at lap 60. But you can find yourself in trouble with the leader if you're not uh, careful and, and being able to go forward. You can't be too careful right now. So Harvick begins to catch the tail end of the field and that brings up another whole topic which is where do the lap cars go and what does the leader have to do to get around him. It'll be interesting to see especially when we get into the late laps just underway at Bristol Harvick leads back after this and a word from your ABC station. Heavy, heavy traffic for the race leaders here at Bristol in the early going. Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, those top four really in the thick of it. And it's not easy to get through some of these lap cars when the groove is kind of narrow on this quick little racetrack. Yeah, a few hard stoppers. Jeff Gordon gets into the back of the seven car, but it, and it jams everybody up off turn two. And it's made this even more difficult with the higher speeds that we're seeing around here. And as a driver, you just anticipate where these cars that you're getting on, you see where they've been running, but you only have to anticipate and assume that they're going to stay where they've been running, which is what they're told to do, but that doesn't always happen. The other part is when you get alongside a car uh, that you're lapping and you try to slide up in front of them off the corner, how much do you assume that person's going to give way to you and how much best you not make that assumption? Yeah, and how much risk do you <laughs> assume yeah. if you're the guy on the outside, too? Yeah, that's a very fine line there. You know, I mean, they're racing hard, too, for the, for the spots that they're trying to, to be in there and, and continue to stay there. It's in your best interest if you'll just make sure each time, especially this early on. See, but that could cost you. Yeah. 16 Biffle, 20 Kenseth. This is 11th and 12th place. Casey Kane, Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray just behind them. And again, that, that 
fierce intensity that comes with the tight quarters racing here on this very fast track. Yeah, you have that, and you're going to add a level. It hasn't gotten to that point just 30 laps in yet, but it's not going to be long before you're going to have a level of frustration that you haven't felt here in a while because you, you, you have racetrack down there that you can use and that you want to, but it's just hard to make a pass from that point. Been so much conversation in recent weeks about one manufacturer versus the other, and one maybe being yet a little deficit in horsepower to the other. Smaller racetrack here. Horsepower, aerodynamics, maybe even some things up or lessen the disadvantage that one brand may be at versus another. Yeah, this is a big equalizer when you come to a short track. You know, aerodynamics obviously don't mean near as much at the speeds you're running, even though they are fast for a half mile racetrack. You're still off of the mile and a half, two mile tracks. And horsepower, I mean, it really comes down to grip. You can sometimes hard to even use all the power at some of these short tracks. Little shot there, Jimmy Johnson into a lap car. 40 is Landon Castle. And what we were told by NASCAR is that they were gonna tell the, the lap cars to, to lay over to the inside, which is the way that it used to be. And uh, because of the, the fast lane and, and the groove basically being that high line, but there's a lot of them that are not adhering to that right now. We'll see if they get a warning about that. <laughs> Jeff Gordon closing in on Kevin Harvick for the race leader. The black car third in the frame, Brett Moffitt, was just on pit road a minute ago for an unscheduled stop, had contact with Eric Almarola's car on the racetrack and had a fender in on a left front tire. So Moffitt, uh, the young driver in just his uh, third Sprint Cup Series start, is four laps down now in 43rd place. Danica Patrick in 33rd place Look as the leader Gordon. goes side by side. Wow, that was, he just dove underneath. Kevin Harvick, see if he can make it work. Pinning behind Danica. Yeah. It's the lead. Now he has to get around the 10 car. Yeah, that's his next issue is that he's got that. But can he make this work? Right there, Whoa. what we're talking about. Forcing your way up there. Got him cleared now, but still so much traffic just ahead of them. Dicey at best for the race leader. Rush hour traffic in a confined area at high speed. Jeff Gordon taking the lead with some contact in traffic.
early going at Bristol, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Our telecast tonight presented by AutoZone. Just crossing the 50 lap mark. Competition caution coming up at lap 60 in a few moments. Next weekend, our NASCAR coverage is on to Atlanta. The big, fast mile and a half Atlanta Motor Speedway where we see such great racing there. Next Saturday night, the Nationwide Series at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. And next Sunday night, the Oral B USA 500 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, 7 Eastern on ESPN. That's next weekend's racing from Atlanta. Change for second place. In traffic, Kyle Busch 18 around Kevin Harvick 4. And had, had to know that Kyle Busch was going to be good here tonight. This racing can be frustrating, but he's been very patient to this point in making his passage. You see Harvick runs up on the lap car, David Gilliland. Just broke his momentum enough. Yep. Now Kyle in the 18 looking for the lead on Jeff Gordon. And Gordon had to resort to the inside and in trying to go around some of these lap cars that just are going to stay in that high lane. They're not lap cars yet, so I shouldn't say that. They're slower cars right at this point in time trying to stay on the lead lap. So new leader and the third one of the night is 18, Kyle Busch. Been one of the best here at Bristol over the years, though he's had a bit of a dry spell lately here. He has, but I think it's been more circumstances than anything else that have really kept them from being up front challenging for victories here. He's just so good here. It's, it's about momentum here and doing the right things. The, the kind of slide job that we saw him put on there with uh, putting uh, Alex Bowman a lap down, that's the kind of things that he does really well. You have to really be able to anticipate as a driver that when you're clear in that position. Just a couple laps from that competition caution. Yeah, that's why you're seeing these guys race really hard, try to hold off Kyle Busch, try to stay on that lead lap. Kyle Busch making a pretty good push to try to get by him. He really is pushing the issue a little bit more than I thought that he might be at this point in time. See Kyle Larson really fighting, holding down there, just trying to stay on the lead lap for another lap or two. And Jeff Gordon looking to take advantage if a little lane opens up. Wow, look at Kyle Busch drive that thing through the center of the corner. Yeah, his car is working extremely good, top and bottom. At the very least, Kyle Larson wants to stay there where he could be the first car a lap down. Yellow I'm down, not sure that's going to happen yellow. right there. We'll see where it came out, but not sure that uh, the 95 of Michael McDowell was in front of Kyle Busch. Remember the procedure for NASCAR when the caution is activated? The uh, scoring loops that are placed at various intervals around the racetrack are activated, and they go back to the last scoring loop that uh, the leaders cross to determine who's where on the track. Being told that it'll be Kyle Larson who gets the free pass as the first car lap down, and he'll come back around onto the lead lap here after the round of pit stops. So, the first run of the race featured a lot of traffic and congestion. Now the first run of pit stops will feature not only a lot of traffic and congestion, but pit, uh, pit crews and crew chiefs taking different options. It's going to take about one can of fuel, so it'd be a good time to take right side tires. I talked to a lot of crew chiefs, especially from the, the top running cars, talked about getting four tires in this situation, but I expect to see quite a few two tire stops. About these cars that weren't handling so good, they're going to have to take this time to make some adjustments and give up that track position at this point in time early on. Don't want to give up much. <laughs> track position heal a lot of problems with the chassis. So here at Bristol, because there are pit roads on both the front and back sides of the racetrack, two different procedures. If you pit under caution, you enter and exit pit road on the side of the racetrack where your pit stall is. But here under caution, everyone enters pit road onto the backstretch pits there off of turn two, runs pit road speed all the way around three and four, and re-enters the racetrack off of turn one. Dave? Kyle Busch has the last pit box, which is the first that will be hit. They'll put on two tires for him. His car is loose, except when he's in traffic. The car tightens. Jimmy Johnson will get a four-tire change for a car that's a little free off turn two. Vince? Jeff Gordon, who led 17 laps, is just too tight to the middle and then too tight on exit. Four tires, track bar up one round. A little bit of damage as well. They'll pull some tape off the front of the car also. Let's go to Doc. Kurt Busch tight on exit, just like he was in qualifying. There's Busch top of your screen. He'll come and get four tires, Sunoco fuel. They'll do an air pressure change and go up one round on the track bar. Jamie. 
Brad Kozlowski saying he's loose everywhere, lacking drive up off. Four tires is what they called for here. They'll see if they'll stick to that plan. Meanwhile, the four car, a four tire stop. You see the adjustment there. They'll take tape off, saying he's just a little bit tight. The number one pit box. They continue to work on the Harvick car on the four, and he's down and away, 13.2. Check the AutoZone race off pit road. A rash of strategy played, but going to be some pit road speeding penalties handed out too. Tell you about them in a minute. First caution out in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Bristol. Our telecast presented by AutoZone. It was a competition caution. Kyle Busch led the race at the yellow flag, led the race off pit road, but Kyle and Jimmy Johnson tagged for speeding on the pit lane. They'll have to start at the back end of the line on the restart. Now you think it'd be kind of hard for Kyle Busch. He's right here. He's coming to his pit stall, which is right here. This is the first speed zone, and now you're going to see He's going to try to get to his pit stall. You would think it'd be kind of hard to speed in that section and get stopped. You found out that you can. So Matt Kenseth, yellow car, is the race leader now. Chooses the outside lane on the restart. Jamie McMurray alongside him. Followed by, as you see, Bernard Jr. and Gordon, Harvick and Logano. Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson all the way back at the tail end of the line. on Kenseth. Up oh, trouble, turn number two, got a car around. 98 car, Josh Wise. Fender torn up on the 32 of J.J. Haley also. And the second caution coming out quickly after the first one wrapped up. Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch went down the pit road on the back stretch, which is very legal. happen here in turns one and two. We knew these restarts were going to be exciting. You can just see the accordion effect there. Just drivers running in the back of each other and finally it spun somebody out. Kyle, Jimmy Johnson actually had to go down like pit road to miss that. Front, check up, check up, check up, check up. Bottom, dig, 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 all clear. And Kyle and Jimmy Johnson. Kyle Bush and Jimmy Johnson. The accordion yep. effect. Yep. 
used to have a thing here we uh, laughed about because we can laugh about it from the safety of the broadcast booth. The rule of five, how when something happened, it was the fifth car back that got the worst <laughs> of it. And as you talked about, uh, DJ and Andy, Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, you're, you're, it's perfectly legal to go down the pit lane to avoid an accident as long as you continuously decrease your speed until you get to the pit road speed. Yes. And both did that. So second caution of the race out and uh, sets up uh, another restart where uh, that inside lane will again be abandoned as quickly as possible by everybody that gets uh, stuck there on the restart. Yeah, and that was so sure though that Gordon might not be able to make it work. He's got four tires. Yeah, four tires, and he's in the best position. It'd be interesting to see with this scenario because it's something we very could easily see at the end of the race, a car with two tires on the outside being the leader, four tires on the inside. See how that works. Big break four. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, and Jimmy Johnson, who all had to start at the tail end behind all the lap cars and everything. Now they will be able to move up and, and uh, be up with the, the lead lap cars. So that's a lot of cars that they won't have to deal with. Pit road's still closed because of that safety truck that's right there where the uh, pit entry is under caution. Remind you to visit Chevy.com and learn more about the all-new Chevy Silverado, the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Interesting when we saw the uh, the slow motion replay of the accident, how pieces were bouncing down the track. And you don't think about it, uh, maybe from the grandstands or the high view, but so many things come off these race cars, even in little contact like that. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, we, what looks little uh, on a short track here. So, uh, but a lot of stuff does come off them. No takers among the front runners. Just after the competition caution, a little chaos in turn two. Chaos, but not calamity. One week from tonight, Jameis Winston and the top-ranked Florida State Seminoles begin defense of their national title. Florida State taking on Oklahoma State in the Cowboys Classic line from Dallas. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo next Saturday, 8 Eastern, here on ABC. Florida State and Oklahoma State. What a great way to open the season. And you seem to read that one with a little more pride than you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Half a lap from the restart, Doc. Yeah, Marcus Ambrose thought he had something dragging under the car, thought the track bar was broken. It came down, jacked it up. It happened to be the slug on the truck arm that was loose. They had to tighten it back up. Unfortunately, he lost four laps. 
Yeah, that slug is what they use for the alignment at the front part of the uh, trailing arm, the rear suspension. Sounds like somebody overlooked it. Jeff Gordon inside of leader Matt Kenseth in the yellow 20. Talked last night about the drivers not wanting to be in that third spot. That was Jamie McMurray that restarted in that position in this restart. We'll see where he ends up after a few laps. Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, everybody doing all they can to keep Jeff Gordon pinned in that disadvantaged bottom lane. That couldn't make it work from that uh, second spot down on the inside. So Logano to second, Harvick to third. There's Kurt Busch going to try Jeff Gordon for fourth. Kurt in the 41. Oh, contact there. Between the 41 and the 24. Fender in oh, on yeah. the tire for Jeff Gordon. Back inside. That's not going to last very long unless it, and that could work itself yeah. out. That that particular quarter panel, it might, it's, it's, it's flimsy enough, but it's, that's a lot of smoke. That's a lot of smoke. Yeah. You got a left rear tire right from when he did you. I'm watching it. Hey, what you're looking for now is to see if it'll smoke less and less as it kind of clearances itself, but ah, that's a lot of smoke. These things are just loading up so much because of the speed in the corner. So Alan Gustafson, the crew chief, with a tough decision to make. Call his driver in under green at Bristol, where yeah. you'll lose uh, at least a lap, maybe two or more. Yeah, he might lose a car if he doesn't, though. Yep. See, the smoke is subsiding some, but uh, tough decision. I mean, they, they don't have a lot to lose. You know, points-wise, anyway, I mean, they're in the chase. They've got the three wins. They'd like to get another one here to try to get those extra three points going into the chase. Yeah, but you don't want to leave your driver out there spinning out in front of the rest of the field here at Bristol either, I don't think. Tough decisions you yeah. got to make, you know? Smoke's getting less and less. It's still smoking too much for me. <laughs> So Gordon hanging in there for now and Gustafson continuing to watch and he's got that last pit box on the backstretch pit at the entrance of turn number three. So he's getting a good look at the left side of that car when it enters the corner at that end of the racetrack. And of course watching the TV monitor where our high definition cameras are giving him a pretty good view of it also. Matt Kenseth hanging on to the lead runs so so well here at Bristol and one of the drivers surprisingly who hasn't won yet this year. They ran really well here back in the, the spring. Led a lot of laps. Unfortunately things didn't work out in the end part of the race for him to be in a position to try to win but you had to know that he was going to be a factor here tonight. 16 Biffle 99 Edwards 88 Dale Jr. 9th 10th and 11th. Carl Edwards, the last five, six races here at the Bristol, a factor in every one of them. Hasn't always gotten the result at the end of the night because it can be easy to find trouble here. But for example, this race a year ago, he led the most laps, had an engine problem, didn't finish the race. It'd be such a frustrating evening here. You, know, you do everything right for maybe 450 laps and then something, uh, things get going and maybe not of your making in those last 50. Uh, yeah, I talked to Jimmy Finney just uh, earlier this afternoon, and he was pretty confident they had a car to be able to repeat their performance in the spring race. But he, uh, he's, they know it's going to be a frustrating night for the, for the driver and for the crew chief to call because of how narrow the groove is. Got some work to do on it to get it back up front. Matt Kenseth is up front. A round of pit strategy on the competition caution of lap 60. Matt's one of the teams that took just two fresh tires on the stop, put him in position to take the race lead. Almost a fifth of the way through, we're back to Bristol after this message and a word from your ABC station.
beautiful night here in Bristol. Muggy summer August night for the night race at Bristol. Our telecast tonight presented from Tennessee by AutoZone. Just crossed the 100 lap mark of this one and Matt Kenseth is the race leader. An update on the biggest mover in the race tonight. Brought to you by Sprint. Eric Almarola had to start at the back in a backup car after a qualifying crash. Look at the number of spots he's made up in the field. For more inside stats, stay connected to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with live race day coverage on America's newest network only from Sprint. Visit Sprint.com slash speed. Happy connecting. He's had to work for him. And a new leader at the front of the pack. Joey Logano has just gotten around Matt Kenseth. Logano in that 22. And Kevin Harvick after Kenseth for second in the four. how it happened lap traffic once again it's going to be this way all night you see Kenseth ran up had really broke his momentum there Logano able to turn his car down make a big run off the corner I think this might be a little bit of a case too where this 20 car with their two tires yep starting to give up just a little bit that's uh, now 107 laps on those left sides Double wide lap cars in front of the leader Logano here. Watch Kevin Harvick try to make some ground. I'm just thinking about what you said earlier and how it's normally frustrating to race here, but drivers were telling you that this is going to be even more frustrating, maybe the most frustrating race ever. You can see it building just yes. in work in the traffic. Yeah, watching Harvick, he's trying something different. He's trying to get all the way down to the bottom, see if he can find some grip. See just how low he's trying to run. He's making it work on some of the slower cars. Just going to take such patience throughout the night that Keep yourself there for two or three laps, knowing that that's what it's going to take, and, and you're just going to have to do that. You're going to have to stay, stay mentally strong as well as physically throughout the night. Logano, Harvick, Kenseth, and then Jeff Gordon back in fourth, having gotten back around Kurt Busch, and we don't see the smoke off that left rear quarter panel anymore, Vince. Yeah, and that's the good news, bad news right now, Alan. The good news is no smoke from that left rear contact, but the uh, bad news is Jeff says the car is just plowing tight. Alan Gustafson and his crew chief told him, hang on to it. You're still okay lap time-wise. We're going to fix you up at the next stop, but Gordon certainly got a hand for right now. Well, I'll agree with the good news, bad news statement. Good news, the car's still got all the fenders on it. He, although one of them wrinkled in a little bit, it's not smoking. Yeah, and just that little bit of rubbing there could change the, the effect of this car, the, the handling of it. Uh, when it hits as your car is loading up, you've got something else taking place there that you didn't have before. So they've got plenty of time to work on it little by little. The main thing will be just to make sure that they get that knocked out the next time that they pit. There's somebody else to keep an eye on tonight, that 11 of Denny Hamlin creeping forward in the running order after starting in 13th place. Hamlin up to sixth position now. And trying to get more, racing 41, Kurt Busch for fifth. Then he's been kind of one of the short track racing masters in his NASCAR Sprint Cup Series career, but this season hasn't quite been that way. Really been surprising to, to watch this team not performing better with this driver that we know just how smooth he is and just how good he is at these racetracks. And not to, to have any more to... to bank on than what they've had on the short tracks is a little bit puzzling. 99 88 Edwards and Earnhardt Jr. Eighth and ninth place. 13 is Casey Mears. Who also had a problem in qualifying. It sounds like I'm saying that a lot. Yesterday's qualifying session was kind of um, action packed as were the practices that happened earlier in the day. A lot of right side fenders scuffed up in practice here on Friday. Edwards able to hold off Earnhardt Jr. For now, he's running in eighth place, Doc. Yeah, Carl Radio did us said I got a little bit of a fender pushed in on the left front, and he said, I'm seeing some tire smoke, although we don't visibly see it right now. He said he got into Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to make the pass, but they're keeping an eye on that left front fender. Edwards still pretty tight. they got to make another adjustment when he comes in next time.
joining the party. Thanks, Doc. Joining the party in that race for position between Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin. Brad Keselowski in the two. It's another guy you expect to be good at Bristol, especially these night races. See Hamlin, he tried and tried, didn't make that pass on Kurt Busch there, the 41. Just still can't make that bottom groove do what they want it to yet. Making his car do what he wants it to right now is Joey Logano, assuming that he wants it to lead. He's doing that. Logano out in front, a quarter of the way through the night race at Bristol. Caution is out. A chain reaction accident down the back straightaway into turn number three. Eric Almarola, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, Brian Vickers, the drivers involved. Almarola clearly getting the worst of the damage in that 43. Things happen fast at Bristol. Yeah, they do. And, and this was in a big pack of cars and just people trying to, to go as fast as they possibly could. You see, they're basically three wide there. I don't think Brian Vickers had any idea that the 42 was up on the outside of him. You can see Boyer running the back of Kyle Busch. As he tried to slow down. He slams into the 43, back into the 15. My goodness. It just continues to happen for a long time around here. You can see it all kind of bottled up right here. Behind Michael Lynette. It's like Vickers just cut Larson off a little bit, and that just started the whole thing. So, two separate incidents that combine. 55 43 have contact in the jam up. Clint Boyer hits Kyle Bush, and then they all come together, and there's more contact. And I didn't, this just happened. Kyle Larson got up there. You can see right there that it was Boyer that got in the back of the 18. Dig, 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 dig. Oof. All clear, all clear. Be right. Check up, stay low, check up, now you're good, you're good. Just hold your line, watch that 43, come, mm. off. come forward here. Come forward, you're good, forward. All right. Oh. Mm. Gee, Kyle Bush had just checked up enough, trying not to get to the 42, and you know, when you're that far back, like Boyer is there, you don't see everything that's happening there. All of a sudden, it's right in front of you. Brakes don't do much good at that point in time. The cost of a penalty. Yes. Kyle Bush from leading, yep. speeding yeah, on pit even, road. Wouldn't have even been in that situation. Back in the suit. He doesn't have a, well, damn, it's damaged, but I don't see any real suspension damage on the car. He'll be able to keep going. We've seen worse looking ones oh, run yeah. well here for sure. In victory lane. <laughs> Safe to say that one's worse looking right now. Yeah. Now we're all done. We just had mentioned what a great job he yeah. was doing, moving up through the pack from the back. He had a really fast race car. Get that hood down. Get some bear bond. Take that hood. And we know how good Kyle Busch's car was. He had actually passed him. A lot of damage there to a car trying to stay in this chase battle via points right now. Spotter up on the roof, getting directions from NASCAR Race Control, giving directions to Clint Boyer of how to go through that accident site and give respect to the safety workers that are there. And so caution out for the third time in this race. Boyer, like Ambrose we mentioned earlier, one of the drivers without a win this year in that so close race for getting into the chase and if that damage to his car is significant enough to really affect their results tonight, it's not going to be a good night at a place where he hoped to have a good one. 
the main focus now is just make sure they don't have anything rubbing. I don't think that it looks like it got any of the tires or anything. You see it, quite a bit of damage on the 42 car there because he was up into the wall after the contact. With yeah, he's, he's lucky that's all he has, though. Just got away before the pace car got by him. Don't get a lot of time to work on the car. When these cars run under caution, they're all yeah. spread out. Just a few seconds to do it and try to get back out and stay on the lead lap. And all those repairs you've seen have been while pit road is still closed because of those safety workers. There were the backstretch pit exits and empties onto the apron, so still haven't opened it up for a full round of pit stops yet, though you see a lot of the crews up on the wall. When that happens, whenever everybody comes in, like the 42 and some others, we'll probably wait, let them make their pit stops. If I assume that we're going to see some pit stops up there, and uh, that way they can get a little bit more time to work on and repair these cars. Last pit stops for a lot of these leaders, Andy, at lap 63. Going to see a similar situation here, about a 60 lap run. Yeah, I think so. You'll see some pit stops and some, some more split strategies. Like the four tires did come to, come to the surface a lot quicker than I thought over the two tires. I mean, Matt kind of struck out there for a few laps, but then uh, Pagano kind of reeled him in pretty quick. All right, green light on at the uh, entrance to the backstretch pits. So the pit road open here. And here comes the race leader. Pagano leading them in. And first up is Vince. Matt Kenseth took only right sides his first stop. This time it'll be four tires. They're going to make a chassis adjustment, also an air pressure adjustment, just too tight across the middle. For Jeff Gordon, a big swing at it. He's plowing tight. A rubber's going in the right rear. Also going to uh, take a round out of the left rear to try to get Gordon freed up. Doc. 30 miles an hour. Here comes Kurt Busch in the quote. Kurt, uh, nasty tight on exit. Starting to get loose. Going to be four tires fuel. Also one round down track bar. Half round out left rear wedge and air pressure. Jamie. Joey Logano saying he's running a whole lot better this run. Still a tick tight. Four tires here. Meanwhile, the four Kevin Harvick having issues with his radio. It's scratchy. They wanted to try to work on that. A four tire stop once again for Harvick. His car too is a little bit better. So uh, just a little bit of strategy played there that's going to change up the leaderboard a bit. During the third caution of this race, Eric Almarola, ouch.
race for the NASCAR Spring Cup is coming this up. This new format turns the sport upside down. 16 nations preparing for battle. Three rounds of elimination. They call it the chase grid. It's gonna be epic. I don't know any other word to describe it. I have never seen a championship like this. This chase grid is a whole other beast. You got that right. These eliminations will not be kind. 16 to 12 to 8 to 4. Four drivers battling for the Sprint Cup. You can feel the tension down here in the garages. There are trap doors to fall through everywhere. Everybody's on edge. This is like no other playoff in racing. The only easy thing here is losing. Nobody knows what to expect. I mean, we're all guessing. I don't want to get too excited, but it's hard not to. Rusty, what do you make of all this? Oh, man, this is going to get interesting. One thing's certain. These guys are going to have the hopes and dreams of a nation on their shoulders. Green flag back at Bristol. The race to the chase. Tonight, Denny Hamlin, the new leader, after another round of strategy on the pit lane, the 11 car out front. something big. <laughs> Very dicey back in traffic. So Hamlin, Dale Jr., Casey Kane among the drivers that just got two fresh tires on the pit stops. Another pit road speeding penalty for Jimmy Johnson, his second of the night, sent him to the back of the line. And Jamie McMurray also got busted for speeding on the pit lane, sending him to the back of the line. Well, I'd watched Jimmy Johnson go through traffic uh, earlier, too, and he had made his way back up inside the top 15 before having that second speeding penalty. Change rights once, change left once. Got a pretty good average on those two power stops. See how this works out. That's the interesting. Bird Jr. have to hesitate there on the gas. It shows you how much Stevie DeCart puts on track position, how much value he puts on it. And they're in a position that they can Forward to gamble and risk and see exactly what happens in a situation like this that if it works out okay then it's something that they can do towards the end of the race they're locked into the chase in a great spot they're only interested in one thing yes trophy and they're only giving out one good look back through the top 10 here ryan newman 31 jeff gordon 24 that is for eighth and ninth. Paul Menard just ahead of them. Matt Kenseth just behind them. Kenseth changing four tires on the pit stop after being up front for a chunk of this race earlier. Kenseth leading 40 laps. Jeff Gordon back in there. I'm sure they took a little time in beating that left rear quarter panel out just a little bit, but I also saw as they started their pit stop or came around to the left side, the a uh, tire changer on the rear, slip and fall. Recovered nicely, though. Whoop. Junior up. Stuff on the wall. I just don't know about not putting right side tires on these things. It's, uh, well, it, I mean, it's an experiment. It might not be successful. Didn't sound very panicky there, for sure, Doc. No, he's not. You know, what he had told Steve LeCart was that when we fire off for, for 10 laps, we're very tight. Then the car gets neutral. So Stevie said, let's put left side tires on. That'll free it up. When, as you saw, it freed it up a little more than Junior expected there a moment ago. He's going to be a little more careful now as the car uh, gets a little lap now on the older right side tires. How much did he catch that outside wall? Not too bad. Definitely hit it. Michael Lynette off the pace in the seven. Left front's down. Front down. Four tires, two off track, Bart. 
Maybe some contact there with the, the seven. This might happen right in front of the leaders. Whoa. Clear, clear. Freddy, say hi. Say hi. Keep digging. No yellow. No yellow. Keep digging. Looks like he just got loose and uh, locked it up to save it. Keep from hitting the wall and blew the left front tire out. Nice one. Great job of saving it for yeah. sure. Speaking of saving, Marcus Ambrose wiggling and wobbling and bobbing. Wrong again. Straight in turn four, straight in turn four, turn four pit road. Like he had a right rear tire down on this car, maybe. Such high hopes for the night. Coming to you guys, coming to you now, coming to you. Four tires, four tires. Yeah, that looked left uh, right rear looked like it was. Not fully up. So tough luck for Ambrose there. And a fight for the lead. Kevin Harvick four trying to take it away from Denny Hamlin in the 11. Trying to do it the hard way. Kyle Busch 18 just ahead of these leaders is already two laps down. He'll go a third lap down if they can overtake him here. Yeah, Harvick would really like to press the issue right here some and get by Denny Hamlin before they get into any more of this lap traffic. He'd like to be able to really see what's in front of him more than he is able to right now. That's a great view giving you an idea just how quickly the situation in front of me on the track can change. Michael Annette there slowing down to come to pit road for a pass through penalty. Whoa! Oh, contact for the lead. Hamlin into the wall. Oh, and collects another one. That's Junior up in turn one, I believe. I couldn't tell what number it was. The wall wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a number on it. That Ham was not going to be happy about that one. Yeah, I saw that car on the back straightaway and I'm trying to figure out what number it was. It's going to be difficult from that side. Go, go, back him up. Okay, we're gonna have to put door for a minute. We might have to put door for a minute before they even let us leave. So let's put rights on it. Steve Latart talking about that safety foam that goes between the roll bars and the sheet metal and the sides of the car. And they might have to find a door too. Yeah. Let's get the left side up. That's what we got to do. Racing for the lead. Gone wrong off turn four. You see Harvick trying to get a big run up off the corner. And I believe he just misjudged right there. He thought that, that Hamlin was going to be a little more speed on the exit of the corner there. He was just going to slide up in behind him at that point in time and just missed just a little whether it was the 11 had to be out the throttle just a little i'm sure denny's going to say that he just got turned that he was wide open well he did he did get turned really i mean i know that this wasn't intentional by the way yeah. we're watching it but you can see kevin had come on, come on. every intention of just going in behind don't get back don't get out of yeah, oh Denny Hamlin has faced all year. Uh oh. He might have to replace that. 
for sure. The frustrations of Bristol. Not the first time we've seen that. Won't be the last, I'm sure. Maybe not even tonight. So Kevin Harvick takes over the race lead. You look at him there riding around under caution. You've been in that situation before. You made a misjudgment on the racetrack and something's happened. What's going on inside that helmet? Well, you, you feel bad for the situation right there. You know, it, it wasn't something he intended on doing. Obviously, at this time of the race, uh, you know, he was just trying to, he, he just misjudged. And you feel bad that, that you put the competitor in that position and it turned out you know, bad for, for two of your competitors. And, uh, but you got to put it behind you. That's all that you can do. You know, you can think about it here while you're riding around a little bit. You know that uh, there's going to be a conversation had and the driver's not going to be happy with you. You have to get back to focusing, go on about your business here. That might sound kind of cold, but that's the way that you have to do it. You can't let that linger in your mind whatsoever. Similar situation last night with Ryan Blaney. Got into Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson crashed. Uh, he kind of knew he felt bad about it, apologized for it, uh, but had to go back to work and he did it. Went back, took the lead and won the race. And then did apologize to Kyle Larson. Uh, Dale Jr., get me out of this car. It's hot in here. Yeah, it's no fun. And to I'm sit not in. happy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're frustrated, aggravated. Now, you saw Denny Hamlin display his displeasure. This is um, a familiar refrain here at Bristol and between these two drivers. This was a year ago, this race. Harvick in the 29. Hamlin in the 11, contact on the track. Harvick with his car in Hamlin's pit box, and then this. Hamlin won't be driving to Harvick's pit box with that one tonight. Not until they work on it anyway. Andy, you talked about it at the opening of the show, just that feeling that you get before this race start, how you know amped up you are and ready to go and so looking forward to it because it's such a big race and you want to do well, and then you have things like this to happen. And for both of these drivers, the 11 and the 88, really out of their control. It's one of the things that always stands out of my mind about Bristol when you work pit road here as a pit reporter is just how many upset and angry people you end up dealing with in the course of a 500 lap race and afterwards. Yeah. But you see why. I mean, yeah. you got Denny Hamlin doing nothing wrong at all, leading the race, doing everything he can do, keeping his car clean, and all of a sudden he's crashed. Yeah. I, mean, that's, I can see why he's mad. It makes even some of the most mild mannered drivers throw things around this you know, place. I think I've seen somebody do it too. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I've seen you do it. And you had to, bring that, had to bring that up. <laughs> you brought it up. That's right. <laughs> uh, can certainly bring out frustration. Pit road still closed because of where the accident scene was is at the pit exit where all the cars will uh, empty out after the round of pit stops. The safety crew is beginning to move away from there. So we should see the pit road open here. And uh, what pit stops we'll get will happen now. Just 30 laps since the last round of pit stops, just a little over 30. Not expecting the front runners in, but somebody's going to make a move and try and yeah. make a strategy play. Let's see how far back they, they are before they start coming down pit road. Casey Kane in 11th place, the first taker on the pit lane. Not the few Dale Jr. wanted to see.
the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol. Our telecast presented by AutoZone wrapping up the fourth caution of the race. A race for the lead between Denny Hamlin in the 11 and Kevin Harvick in the four that went wrong off turn four and down this front stretch. Yeah, Harvick got a big run off the bottom of the racetrack, just trying to slide up in behind, but made a misjudgment there. And collected Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the process. Check downstairs with Vince. As documented, not the first run in at Bristol between Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Denny, first year okay, I presume, and uh, what's your reaction to what happened? Well, like last year he was just not paying attention. He didn't know that I had a cut tire last year, and he just thinks he knows everything and probably thought he knew everything again, and I just wish I had some kind of car left so I could show him the favor back. But, I mean, we're not even halfway. We're racing for the lead. I don't know. Just It's a misjudgment. I mean, he's a good driver. He <coughs> knows better. He just uh, made a mistake. Thanks, Denny. So Kevin Harvick will be the uh, race leader, choosing the outside lane here, while Denny Hamlin is uh, back behind the wall and potentially out of this race. Joey Logano to the inside. Brad Kozlowski drawing that dreaded inside of row two slot in that white and red two car. for the challenge of the restart there from that fourth spot. Sliding into second. Got around the inside front row starter Joey Logano. Brad Kozlowski had an opening to get up in line. Chose to try and stick it out on the inside for a couple laps. Not going to work. Paul Menard is going to squeeze by him. I'll be watching for. I talked to some crew chiefs. They were talking about late in the race after they run about three, four hundred laps on this track that it might put so much rubber in that top lane that they'll be looking for grip down lower than that. So the group may even come down lower as we get later in the race. Yeah, that's one thing that the drivers weren't sure about was there going to be this rubber buildup that we've seen in other years around the bottom side of the racetrack. Was that going to happen up on the, the top side where the right side tires are? So they were concerned about that and then having to adjust from that point. Plus, it's going to be harder to see up against the wall. First side by side was Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth. Gordon clearing Kenseth. Now Carl Edwards goes by as Kenseth decides to find a place to get up in line in the outside lane. Kislowski in the two trying to dig down low again to see if he can get back around Paul Menard. He's kind of committing himself to that. He's just going to see if he can make it work. Man, I say that, he moves to the top. He's going to try getting another run off of that. And you see, he can play around with that a little bit right now. He's got Ryan Newman behind him, but about five or six car lengths behind him. He's got a little bit of time that to see if he can make this work, and that will help him try to move forward more. Now, the five car from Casey Kane, I mentioned he was the first one to break out of line and head for pit road from 11th place. He restarted in 14th position. He's already back up to 11th. The tires are going to be worth something. You know, they're not going to be something you want to give up the lead or even a top five or six, seven spot for. But for Casey Kane, it was a good gamble to come in from 11th. Slight contact. Race. Look out. Close A.J. Allmendinger in the 47. Wow. Hey, there's some tight races. And we talked how many times tonight about Kyle Larson in the 42 and what a big night this might be for him. Involved in an incident earlier. And here he is from starting way back at the back of the pack all the way up to 12th place. He's hanging in there. Settles in line now behind Allmendinger. Not quite to halfway in tonight's Urban Tools Night Race. Bristol Motor Speedway, Northeast Tennessee. One of the highlight races of the summer for the NASCAR Spring Cup Series. Cars rocketing around this super high banked half mile at incredible speeds. And in very tight quarters, we've seen plenty of action already. Four cautions in the race already. One a competition yellow by NASCAR, but the other three for accidents, including one a race for the lead that went wrong recently between Denny Hamlin, the leader, and Kevin Harvick, who was trying to overtake him. 
further update on that story from Jamie on the pit, low, pit lane. And Kevin Harvick, the leader right now, a little bit of right front damage, but he came on the radio right after the incident with Denny Hamlin, and he said, I'm sorry, I apologize. I did not mean to do that. It was a complete mistake and a misjudgment, perhaps, like Denny Hamlin said. So right now, remember, Kevin Harvick is having radio issues. They're going to try to swap that radio out on the next round of pit stops. Jamie, thanks. Harvick has led the most laps tonight. He started on pole. He's led three different times for 65 laps. Other drivers who've led one time apiece include Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, and Jeff Gordon. Back to Bristol after this message and a word from your ABC station. See those yellow lights flashing? We're under caution again here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Our NASCAR Sprint Cup Series telecast presented by AutoZone. Michael Annette has been in the wall between turns three and four in the seven car. Pit road open. Race leaders coming in. Dave? Paul Menard gets up fourth place. He said the car is tight in the center, but quote, not too bad. They will take on two right side tires and a full load of Sunoco fuel. Vince? The 24 of Jeff Gordon says he just doesn't have any drive off, so they're going to give him right sides only. Also going to pull a right rear rubber to try to give Gordon a little more drive off as he exits those corners. Doc? And Kurt Busch continues to be able to have a problem with getting the car to turn the center and to be able to get off a turn a very, very tight. Kurt, top of your screen. Going to change right side tires and make another air pressure change and a chassis adjustment. Jamie. Joey Logano said he started out free but got pretty good there toward the end of the run. They've taken four tires twice. They'll take right sides only this time. Kevin Harvick, four tires stopped. They wanted to try to swap that radio out. A wedge adjustment in the left rear. He's down and away. Good stop. Another big shuffle up in the running order on that pit stop and the reason for the yellow flag. Michael Lynette coming at you into the wall at Bristol.
2014 Little League World Series concludes tomorrow, 10 a.m. on ESPN, Japan and Las Vegas, Nevada in the consolation game, and then at 3 here on ABC, South Korea and Chicago, Illinois in the championship game. The Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes tomorrow on ESPN and here on ABC. Green flag out, Casey Kane, the new leader in the five after not pitting under this caution. You see the split strategies. They pitted just a few laps ago, about 30 laps. And, and he was stayed fortunate. Out. Yeah, there were five others that stayed out with him, so he's got a little bit of a buffer there to those cars that came in and got tires. Yeah, one of those is the 14 car, Jeff Burton, doing a good job tonight. Cars that did not pit, five, Kane, one, McMurray, 48, Johnson, 14, Burton, 78, Martin Truex, Jr. And a few other cars that took just two tires on the pit stop. Kevin Harvick, who was the leader at the caution flag, restarted in 12th place. Jimmy Johnson, two pit road speeding penalties earlier in the race. Moving into third place. I'm not sure if they didn't want to come get tired to give up track position or just <laughs> didn't want another speeding penalty. Last driver to get a speeding on pit road penalty in a race and come back to win was here at Bristol in this race a year ago, and it was Matt Kenseth. Tough to do, but you play your strategies right. You've got a good race car. You can make all of that happen. And obviously, I've been watching 48. He's got a good race car, so that's not going to be the issue. It's a matter of do they get the run that they need where everybody has to come get tires pretty much the next time that they come down pit road. As you see that ticker coming across the top of the screen, the drivers highlighted in the uh, the gold color, the yellow color. Those are the 16 presently as they run that are in the chase grid. The 12 that are locked in by winning races this year, and then those other positions currently in flux based on point standings, and that's as they run in the race. I suspect when we get to Richmond, now those uh, <laughs> gold badges could be coming and going frequently throughout the night. are the drivers who have yet to win and the plus minus on that 16th position as they run right now in this race a lot of guys had trouble earlier tonight Boyer involved in an incident uh, Marcus Ambrose had a couple of problems tonight Brad Kozlowski two. Ryan Newman 31 11th and 12th place and Kozlowski continues to work that bottom lane you know the old theory and the old saying you got to pass them where they're not so if everybody's going to run around the top if you could find a way to make your car work on the bottom well you have to figure that out for for at least a few of these spots and be good enough to be able to do that with some of these cars then others you just wait to make a mistake or you get that track position through making a good pit stop he's really making this bottom work really really well right now not that that's the very bottom but he's the inside <laughs> i should say about as low as anybody's been running tonight. Harvick around Truex back up to eighth place. He did that on the bottom of the racetrack too. Harvick did. A lot of smoke off Cole Witt's car. Apparently he has a fender pushed in on a tire on that 26 car. Witt, one of the drivers who had problems in uh, Friday action here at the racetrack and had to start at the back of the field in a backup car. I don't know if it's going to make it. All the lettering gone off the sidewall of that, uh, yeah, that tire. Getting really shiny in a hurry. Yeah. Not a good sign. So guys getting just uh, two fresh tires on that last set of pit stop include 27 Menards you see there, the 20 Kenseth in the picture, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, and Carl Edwards. All just changing a couple of tires on that round of pit stops. 
Remember, it was back in the March race here that Edwards crew chief Jimmy Fennig used some strategy to get him track position at the right time, and he wound up winning the race. Harvick trying to find a way through Logano. Keselowski trying to take advantage. Keselowski looks really good here in this run, making these passes to the inside. He's come up on some really fast cars, but the 41 there who took the two tires, been complaining of his car being tied already, probably makes it tighter. So this might be an opportunity for Brad to make that inside work and pick up a couple more spots. He's able to gain just an inch here and an inch there. He might be able to make this work. It's slow going down there, though. Yeah, it's just so hard to do. Whoa. Two Penske team cars with some contact there. And that's what you don't want to do is catch that at the wrong place, cut your tire down, push your fender in on the tire, and create a bigger problem for yourself. And no more lettering on the left rear tire of Joey Logano's car. Just like when you're out in rush hour traffic and you find yourself around the same car back and <laughs> forth and back and forth. Kevin Harvick finds himself. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, he tried to get Logano loose there. It was going to give him a little bit of a tap and uh, backfired on him. Lost a spot to the two. Harvick back to ninth. Kozlowski to eighth. Logano seven. Casey Kane, the race leader, closing in on midway tonight here in Bristol. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by Viagra. Beautiful, warm, 76-degree night here in Northeast Tennessee. Fans of the Bristol Motor Speedway enjoying the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And the night race at Bristol are telecast presented by AutoZone. Casey Kane, the race leader in heavy lap traffic, trying to find his way around cars and keep the one car there of Jamie McMurray behind him. McMurray's running second. And my brakes are shaking. They're shaking like crazy on front. Well, I mean, you got clean air on the nose now. The brakes might have got too cold. You don't have any color to your rotors, and the one behind you does. Yeah, what happens to these rotors if they, if they don't get to op operating to, uh-oh, contact right there. They don't get up to operating temperature. What they'll do is they'll get an uneven 
tem uh, temperature across the surface and makes them shake when you hit when you use them, and that's uh, it's really aggravating. I really like being at, at a certain operating temperature, which is a little bit of color to them. Yeah, I think Casey probably wasn't using much brake as he struck out there until he started catching some of the, the lap traffic that he is now in. But it's a, really a bad feeling as a driver to have that happen whenever you're needing that brake and that pedal really shaking. McMurray trying for the lead. 36 Reed Sorensen, 34 David Reagan. They are the last cars on the lead lap. They're not going to give this up easily. They're not, and I'm really surprised that Kane didn't go down there and try to do something. He just sat there like he was waiting on them to get out of the way. McMurray not waiting on them. See the frustration level coming up for Casey Kane, though. He's hit the 36 a couple of times in the yeah. straightaway. But it's pretty obvious he's not moving, so you're, you're going to have to hit him in the corner and move him out of the way or go to the bottom and pass him. So, new leader and the eighth different leader on the night, Jamie McMurray in the one. Now, Jimmy Johnson trying to get up and take second place away from Casey Kane. Watch Jimmy Johnson here. Watched him in practice yesterday. Car looked really good. Had kind of a different look about it. it just looked like this car was really down in the racetrack. Now, watched him earlier after that first incident where he got caught for speeding on pit road. Really made his way up through. Was able to make passes on the bottom. I think there's a lot more to this 48, even than what we're seeing right at this point. Got to find a way to get on and off pit road without getting a speeding penalty, though, and giving up all your track position. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's uh, been twice tonight for Jimmy, if you weren't with us earlier. You can see Brad Kozlowski sneaking into that picture, too. The two different pit stop schedules, McMurray, Johnson, Kane, Jeff Burton, Brian Vickers, they stopped at lap 168. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, they lead the charge of the guys that stopped at 197. So about 30 lap fresher tires on those cars. Update on Casey Kane, who's losing ground, Doc. Spotter's been asking Casey Kane to go downstairs. Get downstairs, use the bottom, use the bottom. About as angry as I've ever heard Kane on the radio. He said, I can't is plowing like a truck. I can't go. So quit telling me to go down there. Casey pretty much stuck right now. Just trying to make the move inside the 13 in the car. That is very tight. So you're already frustrated in the race car. Then the crew chief wants you to do something. And uh, that frustration has to get vented somewhere. And uh, a lot of times it's out the radio. I've never seen that work too well to tell a driver how to drive. <laughs> They never or, take, it, take it very good. Yeah, crew chiefs don't take to being told what to do much either. So, uh, <laughs> but it is a frustration level, especially here where it's happening so fast. Jamie McMurray. Winner last October at Talladega. Winless this season. Could it be a big night for Jamie tonight?
with nine time Bristol winner Rusty Wallace. Rusty, it's time for the five hour energy rapid recap. Let's check it out and see I, what happens. I tell you what, Brad, we've seen a lot of action tonight. I mean, a real tight pit road. You see Kyle Bush and all these guys. Well, look at this wreck they had in the front straightaway. Wow. The 55 car Brian Vickers gets up in a 42, ricochets down and hits Eric Amarillo, takes out Kyle Bush, a host of others. A lot of damage right here, a lot of tempers flaring right now, but boy, I tell you, one of the biggest wrecks we've seen all night long, and look at this one. Oh man, my goodness, yeah, Denny Hamlin gets, Kevin Harvick misjudges Denny Hamlin, takes him out, gets him into the fence, takes Earnhardt Jr. out, destroys his car. Both Hamlin and Earnhardt Jr. out of the race at this present time. See Junior walking back disgusted. He's looking pretty good to points right now. Look at Denny Hamlin. Throws yeah. his Hans device right there at Kevin Harvick. Really mad, really upset. NASCAR is going to frown upon that one, that's for sure. Yeah, Kyle Larson starts from the back. He's had a solid run, been strong all night. Made himself up to 15th position at this time. Really, really fast race. Yeah, and Kyle's one of the guys we talked about earlier in the show, so he's got to get it done. Another big wreck right here. These guys have just been going through this traffic all day long been a lot of wrecks, a lot of pileups. It's been a tough day so far. Really has. Welcome to the ESPN Quick and Loan Studio. Like I say, Brad Darty along with nine-time champ Rusty Wallace. A lot of action tonight, Rusty. I think it's going to continue. I tell you what, I've been seeing a lot of action. You see Danica Pack just wrecked right uh -oh. here. She's out of control. Looks like the car's okay to me. Come Let's go back up there. to AB. Alan? All right, big fella. Caution out for the sixth time in the race. Danica running in 29th position. Turned around in turn two. Cause and effect. I don't know if she had an issue or was just given room. She saw something up in front of her that caused her to get out of the gas and Alex Bowman in the 23 just couldn't quite get slowed down enough, got into the back. Good job not tearing the car up there. Didn't hit anything, you don't do that much. I can't say she really did anything there. Pit road open. Leaders coming in. Dave? Jimmy Johnson gives up third position. He said, I need grip. I really can't race the car very well. So tires, fuel, changes for Jimmy. As for the leader, Jamie McMurray, he'll get a four tire change. He said, free me up a little bit. He'll get Sunoco fuel and four tires. Vince? The 14 of Jeff Burton, it's just a little bit too tight for Burton. They've uh, put four tires on it, made a chassis adjustment as well, and uh, Burton's down and away. And the two of Brad Keselowski, pretty happy with the car, said leave it alone, no changes. A four tire stop, the 22. His teammate, a tick tight air pressure adjustment, four tires. Kevin Harvick pretty happy with his car as well. They were checking out the damage from earlier. They'll take four again this time. Brad Keselowski's out of the box. Joey Logano, and here comes Kevin Harvick and the rest of the gang. Change of lead on the pit lane. Brad Keselowski will be the control car for the restart with a green flag waves again at Bristol.
coming to the restart at Bristol. Brad Keselowski, the race leader, outside lane. Jamie McMurray to his inside. Johnson trying to struggle back up into line after having that once again I know we've said it several times but dreaded spot on the inside of row two for the restarts. Well it's just so difficult from that spot and all these drivers knew it they just try to make the very best they can. How about right behind him the 42 car Kyle Larson. My goodness he's come from the rear in this backup car been involved in a couple of straight uh -oh. contact from Kurt Busch. Kurt gave him a break though. Almost involved in another scrape. Yeah, he's the only car out there. Kyle man, gets some more contact from Kurt Busch. The 42 is the only car on the track that took two tires under that last round. And that's not working too good for him. He's out of control here pretty much right now. And if you change the right side ones and you're getting knocked in the left rear, you might make it a little extra dicey. Up front, Brad Kozlowski, the race leader. Kevin Harvick has moved to second. McMurray back to third. Then Jeff Burton up to fourth, subbing for Tony Stewart in that 14 car, and Joey Logano now racing Jimmy Johnson for fifth place. Burton wheeling that thing tonight, didn't he? Oh, doing a great job. Jeff's always enjoyed racing here, but probably taking most of the weekend to get used to the car here and the different line and everything that he's been used to running here. Making Tony proud and send our best to Tony while we're talking about him. A lot of signs in the grandstands on lap 14 tonight, I was told to expect uh, in support of Tony Stewart. Uh, no word as yet as to when Tony Stewart might return to the race car. Uh, of course, uh, out now a third straight week after that uh, terrible tragedy in upstate New York a few weeks ago where a young driver, Kevin Ward Jr., lost his life. So Jeff Burton doing a fine job in the Smokes car tonight in fourth place. Watching this knot here. I don't know how Kyle Larson's driving this car <laughs> from what I've been watching out there. <laughs> thing is not driving very well right now for him. Larson running in 11th place. Couple of stories to update you on while uh, up front they've sorted things out single file for the moment. During the commercial break just before the Danica Patrick spin, Casey Kane was on pit road under the green flag in the F5 car. Finds himself now a lap down, the first car one lap down, but in 24th place, Doc. Yeah, he'd had a tight race car, Allen, and then started losing the losing spots, and he couldn't get the car on the bottom of the racetrack. Then he said, I got a tire going down, and then the green flag stopped. You mentioned he had a loose right front wheel. A loose right front. They changed the tires. He lost a couple laps, stayed out, got the wave around, now being shown one lap down. So uh, hoping to make it up, but a loose right front. That's the reason for the unscheduled stop. 34, David Reagan, and 36, Reed Sorensen of the car's racing cane for that uh, free pass position if the caution were to come out. Well, the loose wheel explains the brake shake that he was complaining about and the tight race car. Yep. Now, one other story, Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on the racetrack. 106 laps down in a car that looks like um, it might have been in a demolition derby on a holiday weekend Sunday night at your local racetrack or something. I was going to say, that side looked pretty good. This one, not so, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Orange tape paint on the, uh, uh, stuck on the side of the door to uh, resemble the mandated number by NASCAR. Those Mountain Dew cans are kind of thin. They don't really straighten up too good. <laughs> it's a terrible place to have to go out with a wrecked race car and try to stay up to speed and, and minimum speed. I think they've got some more work to do on Dale Jr. I see him taking it back behind the pit wall. Jeff Burton. Jimmy Johnson, Joey Logano, 14, 48, 22, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The race later is encountering some lap traffic that's giving him a fit right now. Brad Kozlowski taking the lead from Jamie McMurray on the exchange of pit stops under that last caution. And there they are, those lap cars that they've caught. And Kevin Harvick joining in the mix here in the four. Three wide off the corner. Jamie McMurray, oh. Pretty aggressive on that bottom side. Yes, he is. Got a fast race car, though, doing a nice job here. It's 
Slater. Slater. Excuse me, I need that lane? Yep. Places to go. People don't use turn signals on the highway anymore. Why worry about it on the racetrack? No. <laughs> so McMurray holds off Harvick for now for second place, but they're trailing the two-time winner here at Bristol and the champion from a couple of years ago, Brad Keselowski, out in front, looking to see if he can get another win and move into sole possession of the championship lead. Back after this from your ABC station. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by Diet Do, the only diet with do in it. On a Saturday night in Northeast Tennessee, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at one of the highlight races of the summer, the night race at Bristol, and the race for the lead heating up. Two, Brad Kozlowski has it. One, Jamie McMurray, and four, Kevin Harvick won it back. Yeah, uh, McMurray's figured something out. You can see that groove he's running right there. He's running all the way to the wall in the middle of the corner, but he's able to turn that car down on the exit of the corner and get a good bite. It looks like that the way the track's rubbering up, that that upper lane is giving up some grip. Yeah, now that bottom's starting to come in. Yeah, especially on the exit of the corner where it'd be Murray. He's going to have a hard time making a pass like this still just around the bottom. But if he can get that big run off the corner, carrying so much speed on the exit and down the straightaway, he was beating Keselowski about two tenths a lap. 23 car, young Alex Bowman. Is the last car on the lead lap. Trying to stay there. Now the first car one lap down. Which is bad for Casey Kane and his fans who were sitting in that position. Yep. Hoping for a caution. Interesting how track conditions are changing now and we're seeing drivers adjust their tactics accordingly and maybe rethinking the way they might approach these uh, last uh, 197 laps. It's certainly going to be an adjustment and who's going to be able to make that adjustment the very best. You know, I've seen some of these cars up in the front kind of having to pedal on the exit of the corner. See if they are able to change their line. I see Joey Logano and, and Jamie McMurray or two Kyle Larson back in uh, traffic a little bit has been doing kind of the same things. We'll see some others catch on to that. 31 Ryan Newman trying to get around the lap car David Stremme in the 33 and keep Carl Edwards behind him while staying in touch with Matt Kenseth that he was trying to pass when they caught the traffic. Edwards started up in third position in this one. 
fell back in the opening couple of runs in the race with the car not handling to his like. Now trying to work his way back to the front as we get toward the later stages of this one. McMurray still working Kislowski for the race lead. And said the drivers that have a car that's tight where the front end just won't turn the way that they want are going to have a little more of an issue up top where that car won't turn with that, that rubber that's up there. But Jamie McMurray has found him a group around here that's working well, Dave. And DJ, remember, he won earlier this year, but it didn't count for the chase. It was the all-star race. And Jamie told me that that day we had a good car, we made good decisions, and I got a great final restart. Well, he told me this weekend we've got a good car. He's relying on Keith Rodden for the good decisions, and he's hoping he can be the leader like he's trying to be right now so that he can control that restart and choose the outside line. Can he stay inside Keselowski and pin him in behind the lap car? David Reagan. 34 running in 25th place. It'd be a matter if he can stay there long enough to get the two car right up behind the 34 and not give him a lane to deal with. Looks like he's going to complete that. So, new leader, Jamie McMurray in the one. Here comes Kevin Harvick to try to apply some pressure to Keslowski. I don't know that McMurray was one of those that a lot of people talked about having that chance of winning this race and getting themselves in the chase. He did run well here in the spring, though. Didn't get the finish for how well he ran. It's easy to say about a Russell race. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them to say that. Yeah. Harvick in between the two Penske cars. Joey Logano still working there. Logano led a chunk of this race earlier. Well, this is going to really benefit Jamie McMurray as he pulls away from these is in lap traffic to where they're all running up around the top. Jamie's able to get his car around the bottom, make speed there, make these passes a lot easier where these other drivers can't get their cars down there and feel comfortable in doing it. Nothing lasts long in racing. All the spotters up on the roof, all the crew chiefs on the pit boxes watching all these different lines. And yeah, it was very interesting that the last run that we had before the last caution when Danik spun out, it was the two car that had got down the bottom and made his way to the front by utilizing that bottom. And now his car, not to his liking, as he tries to get down there. So Kozlowski, Harvick, Logano racing for second behind leader Jamie McMurray with 183 laps to go. Don't forget, next weekend, more primetime racing for you, this time on the mile and a half Atlanta Motor Speedway. Next Saturday night, we've got the NASCAR Nationwide Series for you in a 300-miler, ESPN2 at 7 Eastern Time. And then a week from tomorrow, Sunday night racing, the Oral B USA 500 from Atlanta, where the tires wear out, the cars seek different grooves, and the competition is always fun. That's next Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. A lot of competition still to come tonight from Bristol. The leaders, Jamie McMurray.
It's the Irwin Tools Night Race at Bristol for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. We come to you live from Northeast Tennessee. Reminder, you can check out NASCAR.com at any time for all your latest NASCAR information. See, we've still got a long way to go. A lot of racing left, but Jamie McMurray has shown himself to be one of the favorites to decide it when it comes time for that 500th lap to be run. McMurray out in front by a second and a half now over this fight for second place between the Penske teammates, Brad Keselowski in the two, and Joey Logano in the 22. I believe Logano's a little bit faster, just hasn't found the right opportunity yet to try to make that pass on his teammate. See the scoring ticker, Jimmy Johnson fourth, Kevin Harvick fifth. On the lead lap now, 21 cars, last of the Martin Truex Jr. in 21st position. Yeah, big run. Logano gets off the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah. Same same line with Murray used. And is still using. So change for second place. Logano ahead of Kislowski. Jimmy Johnson got by Kevin Harvick. So Johnson up to fourth position, kicking Harvick back to fifth. Yes, happened off a of turn two. Harvick ran up on some traffic and they ran in the back of Marcus Ambrose. Jimmy Johnson in the right place at the right time took advantage of that. Better have the nose of that car heavily reinforced when you come here. Oh yeah, you always put an extra brace or two for Bristol. So Johnson just joining us, recovering from two pit road speeding penalties earlier in the race. Started up front, took the green flag in sixth position, but had to go to the back of the line twice. Jack Knauss has worked the strategy, and Dave obviously they've got a pretty fast race car underneath that driver. And hopefully figure out that pit road for the rest of the race. Probably only have to stop one more time in this blue race car. Yeah, that was big news this week. The car has been white all season long. And while Jimmy says I'm not a superstitious person, he personally reached out to Lowe's corporate and asked them if he could replace it with the with the blue paint scheme that they've won so many championships with and really like. And I confirm with Chad Knauss this afternoon, he likes it too. He wanted the change. Blue 48 the rest of the season if they can do it. Jamie. Running 2-3 right now. Joey Logano led 29 laps tonight. That means he's already surpassed in one season the amount of laps he ran from 2009 to 2013. It's been a good season and it's been a good night. Joey happy with the car, just a tick tight. The last time he said all they made was an air pressure adjustment. The two of Brad Kozlowski said he's lost a lot of turn. He needs to free the car up, and that's why he hasn't been able to turn that car on a dime and get down low like the car is passing him on the inside of Jimmy Johnson. So Kozlowski. Not only losing turn, losing a spot as Johnson has gone by him and kicked him back to fourth place. Yeah, I knew there had to be something with this two car from that last time that they pitted, put tires on. He said he didn't want any adjustments. They didn't make any, but this set of tires way tighter or probably the racetrack has tightened up quite a bit, I would say, but just not working for him right now. They'll have to make an adjustment for this. Danica Patrick five laps down after getting spun earlier in the race. 31st place car just ahead of her 32 car JJ Yaley. Also a number of laps down seven to be specific 37th place you see the crash damage on that 32 car from involvement in a yellow flag earlier in the night. Jeff Gordon started on the outside of the front row. Led some laps in the very early going of this race but now finds himself back in 15th place. He had a problem earlier where he got a fender pushed in on a tire it smoked for a while didn't blow out. And then we haven't seen Gordon contending for the lead in some time. I don't know if you want to try this, but I'm watching the leader from the center up before. He's running right to the bottom, right here, going all the way to the bottom. I'm trying it right now. Oh, it's out to lunch, and I can't find a groove, so I'll try it. Okay. And four. Well, there you, there you heard a little bit of frustration in the voice of Jeff Gordon. Everything he's trying, he doesn't feel like is working. Uh, no fault of Alan Gustafson because he's taken a couple of big swings to try to get Gordon the kind of car that he needs. No telling whether that right front damage is hampering them, but uh, not what Gordon wants or needs right now in that 24. Almost had a little run in with Justin Allgaier in the 51 there as they race in traffic for the 14th and 15th position. Speaking of 14, Jeff Burton talked about him a little bit ago having a really solid night. 
Well, he's just fallen back to 10th position. Watch the 14 and the 42. Big hit. Nice save by Kyle Larson. All right, nice save here. Good by two. Looks like Larson got slowed up in the center of the corner there, and Burton's momentum carried him right to the left rear quarter panel. So far, a really solid night for 42, despite some adversity involved in an incident earlier, made repeated pit stops. You see all the Band-Aids and bandages on that car. And yet, after starting at the back of the field, Larson is in the top 10, running in ninth spot now. Still a lot of racing to go, though. 153 laps left in the night race at Bristol. Almost three quarters of the way through the night race at Bristol, our telecast of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series tonight, brought to you by AutoZone. The race lead in the hands of Jamie McMurray with 142 laps to go. Three races to go until the chase grid is set. The Danger Zone brought to you by Nationwide Insurance shows you where some of the winless drivers are running right now as the caution comes out on the racetrack and ends the longest green flag stretch of the night in this race. Told a piece of debris off of one of these uh, race cars has fallen on the track over in turn number two. And so uh, the yellow flag out for the seventh time in this race. There it is. Murray just put Brian Vickers and Jeff Gordon both a lap down. I believe the 55 was probably a lap down there. It was close as to whether when the caution came out. Almost 100 laps since pit stops. We'll see everybody in here. 50, uh, sorry, 51 car of Justin Allgaier is the last one on the lead lap in 14th place. And here they come. Dave? Jimmy Johnson told Chad Knauss, my car is tight in on the early part of the run. I need you to adjust for that. He'll take four tires. Leader McMurray. His car needs to turn just a little bit better, but not too much. Jamie wants a slight adjustment. Looks like it'll be air pressure and four tires. Vince? 
For the 20 of Matt Kenseth, he said it's gotten a lot better, but I'm still not in love with it. It's a little bit too free. So it's going to be a four tire change. No other changes for the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Two of Brad Kozlowski, you heard the radio. He is just struggling with that car, super tight, bouncing all over the place, doesn't think it's a balance issue. They're going to try to free him up here. The 22 at Joey Logano, four tire stop. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. The four, Kevin Harvick in the number one pit box. Four tires is the call there. As the time ticks down, the race off pit road 22 is first out. They continue to work on the left side now of the four car. Joey Logano first off the front stretch pit lane, but Jamie McMurray ahead of him and will hold on to the race lead. Back to Bristol after this from your ABC station. Get ready for another restart here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It'll come with 135 laps to go and Jamie McMurray, the race leader. Joey Logano second. Jimmy Johnson draws that uh, dreaded <laughs> inside row two position again. He tried to do something about it exiting pit lane. He was hoping Kevin Harvick was going to pull out of his pit stall there where he might be restarting fourth on the outside, but didn't happen. The damage on starting third on these restarts tonight. Johnson won that's been able to kind of hold serve there. He batted a lap here, it looks like. So uh, that is see great. what he can do here. But I believe he's got Matt Kenseth to his outside this time. Who Matt. looked really good in that last run of the race. Yeah, it's probably the best of the day. I know he led laps earlier, but that was on a strategy play and, and he restarted out front. So Johnson starting, restarting third again. Third. You try, boss. Well, nothing you can do. When there's nobody behind you to pass you coming down the pit <laughs> lane like that, it's going to be hard to let somebody by. Free pass to Brian Vickers. Back on the lead lap in 15th place. Wave arounds to the lead lap. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. took a uh, wave around, and he gets back in sync with the race leader, but did not pit under this caution. He's got 100 more laps on his tires and fuel than everybody else.
Johnson's not going to hold serve on this one. Racing for six there with Keselowski. Matt Kenseth trying to take the second spot away here from Joey Logano. I tell you what, uh, it that pleased was, him a little. Yes, he did. He took a chance there that Logano would get out of the throttle and not get up into the side of him. That's how you do it. It's what you got to do to get those positions here. Carl Edwards continuing the rally. Fell back some earlier in the race. Now racing with Brad Keselowski for fifth place. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson all the way back to seventh after restarting third. Ryan Truex's car has just been retired from the race. He's out. Oh, Greg Biffle had a little trouble getting up off of turn number four. Had some contact with, I believe, the Paul Menard car. And now the 16's trailing some things. an issue. We're either going to have a caution or they're going to bring 16 to pit road. Would be the latter. Black flag going to be shown to the 16. He's hoping somebody will tear that off for him right quick. If he tries to get up against the wall right here. And just went under the waving black flag at the start finish line. Car in the inside wall, Marcus Ambrose. The yellow flag is out. Break for Biffle right there. Now is Marcos letting the field pass by or looking for someone in particular? Letting the field pass by. A uh, night that started with high hopes for Marcos at a track where he scored uh, some top five finishes, ran so well back in the March race here. And uh, it's been nothing but troubles all night for Ambrose in the 19. Yeah, here's Marcus Ambrose, laps down, three wide on the bottom. I think that might be Mark Truex Jr. David Gilman. Tough, tough, tough night for Ambrose. And the yellow flag waving again at Bristol for the eighth time. What a shock.
NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Red Lobster. Come in today and seafood differently. Quicken Loans for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. And Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste. Zero calories. The energy still there. As we get down to 121 laps to go, past the three-quarter mark in tonight's race here at Bristol. And the caution out for the eighth time in this race after Marcus Ambos crashed off of turn four down the front straightaway. So Greg Biffle now no longer trailing that rear, as they call it, TV panel on his uh, 16 car. Let's show you what happened to cause it. Off of turn number four, Biffle, Justin Allgaier here. Biffle was taking a chance there that the 51 knew that he was out there. Justin Allgaier just slid up and then that got Paul Menard into the back. Biffle Mark. showing his displeasure now. Not once, not twice. Now you got to show him what he did. Look what you did to my car. <laughs> look, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Truex got a piece of that one also. So doubled up for a restart that's going to come with 119 laps to go. McMurray, Jamie in the one car, really strong in this uh, middle section of the race and as it gets on into the later laps with Murray's now led the most laps on the night. Matt Kenseth to his inside and Joey Logano inside row two. See where he ends up after we run four or five laps. But he's been able to make the bottom work a little better than others Logano has. front of Harvick. Logano gets it done from the bottom. Now here comes Harvick with the crossover. Hmm, Logano drove it off into the corner there. He wasn't going to let Harvick have any chance of a slide job. Now it might cost Kevin a few spots. Yep. Yeah, those two cars come back to life from this run. Kozlowski by. Here's Edwards in the 99 alongside Harvick. Little gap. Kevin will jump into it before Jimmy Johnson draws up on his back bumper. cars on the lead lap. Paul Menard got the free pass at that last caution. He is the 17th of those unscheduled pit stop not pictured for Marco Sambros. In again the tough night continues. Jimmy Johnson 48, Kurt Busch 41, 7th and 8th place. I think Jimmy had a little problem getting off of turn 4. Actually opened up the door for the 41 to Kurt Busch to get to his outside. He cost him another spot. Newman, Ryan Newman, 31. A.J. Allmendinger, 47. Top 10 run tonight. The Watkins Glen winner. And another great run for Justin Allgaier right behind him. I know we showed Allgaier on the little tangle with uh, Greg Biffle earlier, but this 51 team in Allgaier, second time around at tracks this season, have shown improvement about every week. They have. I talked to his owner, Harry Scott, this afternoon, and you know, just talked about the fact that they are making progress. It's incremental. But you can see it. It's measurable. They're getting better every week. Vince? Well, Steve Addington told him on that last pit stop they hated to mess with him much because they were really running well. They've had a little bit of a loose end, tight center off, as most people have today, but certainly one of the stronger runs for Allgaier. Remember, he won a nationwide race here, so maybe a little extra confidence out of the 51, but Addington's definitely giving something to work with tonight. So Allgaier lead lap and running in the 11th position with 109 laps to go tonight here in uh, Bristol. 
What a night it could be for Jamie McMurray. Got a long way to go. Maybe a few more restarts to go through it yet. But uh, driver and team, uh, Dave mentioned earlier, they, yes, they won the Sprint All-Star race earlier this year in May at Charlotte, but that doesn't count. That's a, a non-points paying race. So McMurray on the outside of things, 23rd in points, 64 points, a large sum behind a chase qualified position to get in there on that marker. So McMurray really needs to win a race to make the chase, Dave. And Alan, if you think no one could have predicted this, you should have talked to Jamie this afternoon. He said, in practice, I'm typically not very good here. But on Friday afternoon, I stayed out for a 30-lap run. He said that's, quote, highly unusual for me. And that told him that he'd have a balanced race car, no matter what crew chief Keith Rodden did to it overnight when he started this race. They made the right decision so far. We'll see if they can pull out tonight. Solid. Great drive so far for McMurray. Troubles again for Casey Kane, who is off the pace and on the pit lane for an unscheduled stop second time tonight under the green flag. A hundred laps to go. What's going to be tonight's late night twist of plot in Bristol? Probably one coming. But right now, 38-year-old Jamie McMurray from Joplin, Missouri, who's out in front. There's the race for the lead inside the final 100 laps in the night race at Bristol. Jamie McMurray in the one, Matt Kenseth in the 20, trying to chase him down and take that top spot away. Check on the driver who's led the most laps tonight. Brought to you by Sprint. It is Jamie McMurray, the one car in first place in that category and in first place on the race scoreboard. For more inside stats, stay connected to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with live race day coverage on America's newest network, only from Sprint. Visit Sprint.com slash speed. Happy connecting, race fans. Lap traffic and competitors pursuing for McMurray. Matt Kenseth 20, Joey Logano 22. Closing in. That was Alex Bowman in the 23 you saw headed for the apron. He's on pit road under the green flag. We talked about Casey Kane with an unscheduled stop. Five cars gone behind the wall with problems on that right front where the wheel was left loose earlier. Update there on one of our chase bubble drivers, Doc. Yeah, tough right for Casey Kane. They, they had a tire rub in the right front. He came in and thought he had a right front tire going down. They tried to replace the tire, and the tire would not go on. He came behind the wall, found out that the spacer was bent. So they're having to basically 
drill the, the old spacer off to take it off, replace it before they can replace the right front tire. He has some suspension damage there, the front splitter is bent, he has left front damage, but a tough night for Casey Kane. So Casey behind the wall. Dale Jr.'s car has been retired from the race. Jeff Gordon is a lap down in 17th place. And the lead is heating up. Whereas back in the March race here, all of the Hendrick cars finished in the top seven. Only Jimmy Johnson is in the top ten now. Tough night for them. Boy, this lead's tightened up. Just had to know that as good as Matt Kenseth is, this team was good. Looking forward to this race, uh, the drivers looking forward to this race, knowing that this is their opportunity to capitalize and get themselves back to victory lane. He's got a tall order. Jamie Murray's fast. He's run the line. It's going to be tough to take away and take the lead. Kenseth is right there, as is Logano, trying to take second. Kenza sitting there just looking for that one opportunity where McMurray steps out a little bit early, not able to complete the pass. Maybe take that high side around. See him really get loose there. Kenseth in the 20. He was trying to make a big run. Yeah, he tried to step on the throttle. It's a little too hard. Here comes Joey Logano with a good run. And Kenseth battling oh. hard. Mm. Might have something to say about that if he can get back there. <laughs> So McMurray holds the lead. Now a new second place driver pursuing him, Joey Logano. I think I misspoke a second ago. That was Michigan that uh, everybody finished in the top seven in the, in the spring race for Hendrick, wasn't it? Yeah. One of those things that as soon as you say it, you say, huh, no, wait, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> They've been so solid this year, Hendrick. Yeah. yeah. Mike's been a tough night for I mean, even for Jimmy Johnson, a couple of speeding penalties. Yeah. He's hanging in there, though. So Joey Logano, so close to the win last week at Michigan. A series of late restarts against Jeff Gordon. Finally, the one with 17 to go where Gordon was able to get by him. Now racing under the green flag here with two lap cars side by side ahead of he and Jamie McMurray. David Reagan, 34, Landon Castle, 40. Looks like David Reagan's going to give him that high side. I think Kenseth, just a few wiggles here and there. His car is just not quite as solid as it was a few laps ago. No. Just very interesting as this night has gone on, how the drivers that were really good at the beginning of this race, yep. we don't really see them have very good race cars right now. It's the others that have made adjustments uh, to their race cars and, and be able to change their line a little bit uh, as they did that. Yeah, I think it's, the track conditions have changed quite a bit. And the ones that have adapted the best are the ones we find up front. McMurray, we saw him change his line early in the race, like midway. Same thing with Keselowski and Kenseth now as well. I think his track conditions have changed to the favor of some other cars. I saw Justin Allgaier just have to go on and off of pit road there. We were talking about the nice run, but got him a couple laps down now. So 75 laps to go. A lot of racing left. But Jamie McMurray leading the most laps, almost double the number of the next highest laps led total.
Let's get ready to rumble! Rumble they've done on the high banks of Bristol Motor Speedway tonight. Some beating and banging, including some big names. That race for the lead between Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick gone wrong, collecting Dale Jr. And resulting in that from Hamlin. Under caution now for the ninth time in the race. Debris on the front straightaway. Piece of metal. Pit road open for the race leaders here. Matt Kenseth stays out. Edwards stays out. Others around them at the front of the pack come in, Dave. So hard to give up the track position, but Jamie McMurray said my car was a little tight in the middle. It got a little bit loose off the corners, so they wanted to come in and make an adjustment and give them two right side tires. Vince. Round of the front stretch pits come Logano, Keslowski, Kurt Busch, and Kevin Harvick, who's already picked up a pit road speeding penalty on this set of stops. So the four car is going to have to go to the back of the line for the restart. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski on the last stop went up two rounds on the track bar. Now he's saying it's just too loose. He's bouncing all over the track still. Meanwhile, the 22, his teammate, starting to get a little bit tight, but his car has been good. They work on the left side, wipe the grill, give him the water. So Harvick will go to the back of the line, and Matt Kenseth will take over the race lead. Strategy session underway here in Bristol. Half a lap from the restart that'll come with 63 laps to go tonight in Bristol. Uh, Matt Kenseth now the race leader by not pitting under this caution flag. Was that what they meant to do? Probably hang on to what I got. I just don't know if I can catch those guys. Well, I think we got a pit here. Hey, man. Okay. All right, just save some fuel there. We should be good. Kenseth, Edwards. Larson and Menard not pitting under the caution. Jamie McMurray, who was the race leader in first off pit road, restarted fifth. Uh, that radio com say, I'm not sure that's not a conversation they'd had before to throw some others off that may have been listening to them.
Here comes Joey Logano looking three wide. Logano now the highest running in the cars that just pitted. And up to third. Kozlowski makes a big move there. He's by McMurray and up in front of Larson also. The winners of the last two races here, Kenseth and Edwards. Go, oh, Edwards loose. Got out of the groove. And by for second is Joey Logano. And he just got all the way up against the wall off turn two and lost that spot. So now Edwards and Kozlowski to race for third. The race back here in March. Edwards last pitted at 397. Jimmy Fennig left him out of the track at 452 when others pitted. Edwards went on to win. Tonight, Edwards last pitted at 361. Did not pit at 433. And now he finds himself running fourth. Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson. Racing for seventh and eighth, right behind Jamie McMurray, who was leading this race. And now, through the uh, turn of strategy and that restart break, finds himself with a hole to dig out of. Yeah, he's really going to have to get going. His car doesn't seem to be working as good down the bottom as what it was previously. He's going to maybe lose a spot here. Or Jimmy two. Johnson. Lose one to Kirk Bush, too. Wow. You got to figure he's so frustrated behind the wheel right now, too. It's just a bad feeling to, as a driver. You know, you go in, you don't make any change. You've got the car to beat. Now, speaking of McMurray right now, some strategy puts you back, and then you get caught in the wrong spot on the restart, and you just losing spots. Great to bite the steering wheel in half. Joey Logano all over Matt Kenseth now for the race lead. He wants to get there because he sees his teammate coming in his mirror, too. In a big hurry. Ninety-eight car, Josh Wise. Giving way to these front runners. <laughs> Slipping and sliding around trying to do it. And Matt does a good job with old tires in this situation. This is going to be a tough, tall order for him to hold the lead. Logano give it that shot while he still he, he knew he still had a spot to slip up into there. It's going to be a little more calculating here before he takes that opportunity the next time. Trying to make a big run off the corner. Kenseth though is so good at not overdriving his car into the corner and then powering up on the exit of the corner. Makes it tough to make that pass on him. And now back to those assumptions we talked about earlier. Now you assume he's going to give you a whole lot less room than the guy you're racing for a spot here. Kenseth's problem is he really needs to win, but he's up against two guys here that all they care about is getting another win and adding some bonus points before they get to the chase. Now Matt Kenseth is holding off cars that have 70 lap fresher tires. Logano got off a of four there, but can he get it turned and pointed? Look at that. A good run that time. He's trying his best to do this without hitting Kenseth, and I think he's going to make the pass work right here. Kenseth's going to hit him. Nope, didn't quite get back to him. That's a nice job by Joey Logano. New leader, 44 laps to go. Joey Logano, but he better not relax much. Here comes Brad Kozlowski after Kenseth for second. That was a tremendous amount of patience shown by Joey Logano, knowing that he had better tires than Kenseth did. Just kept working and working.
So that settles in for now. And Joey Logano goes out in front, leading with 42 laps to go at Bristol, and the checkered flag still a little ways away. Joey Logano, Connecticut native, driving for Roger Penske, out in front here at Bristol looking for a victory at this racetrack, looking for his third win of the season. And for second place, his teammate Brad Kozlowski of the two continues to fight Matt Kenseth to try and find a way around. I'd be Brad's biggest uh, chance right here, best chance I should say. Trying to pin Kenseth in behind the lap car of Casey Mears in the 13. And he's going to get it done. So does he have enough time to get there? One and two tenths seconds behind. A lot of lap cars. Will we see another caution flag? And the answers to these and other questions. Yes. <laughs> Don't know about that caution, but I mean, obviously, Gano's going to have a lot of traffic that he's going to encounter. Where he catches it and how he's able to handle it, he's going to decide if he's going to have to hold off his teammate. Carl Edwards, 99. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., 17. The drivers who finished first and second in the race here back in March. Both have made nice rallies tonight. Racing for sixth place now. Yeah, Stenhouse made a, a nice comeback. Uh, hasn't been that strong. Had a bad qualifying effort, and, and it's kind of put him behind the entire night, but uh, making the charge here at the end of the race. Had troubles getting their car through technical inspection to go out for qualifying. Finally just put it out there to make a lap to get one done. Started a lot deeper in the field than he wanted to. At one point did get a lap down. They took a wave around to get back on the lead lap. And from there things have fallen in their favor. And Stenhouse has done a nice job tonight here in Bristol. Carl Edwards started in third position and we talked about Carl having had his difficulties tonight falling back losing track position and then rallying but once they got up to the backside of the top five that's as as far forward as they've been able to go. Yeah the handling just hasn't been there tonight. Uh, it's what Carl Edwards needed. Uh, Kurt Busch has been all over the back bumper of this 48 of Jimmy Johnson trying to find a way. Solid night for Kurt. Yeah, very solid night. Been, they've been locked up in this battle since the restart. Yeah. yeah. Talked to Kurt a little bit uh, yesterday about his 
late charge there at Michigan and, and just how he viewed this. And he said, look, you know, I don't have anything to lose at this point. We're in the chase. He said you know, it was about going for a win. He said, you know, I hated to tear up that race car that late because it was a good car. He said, but everybody at the race shop came over, patted him on the back during the week. And they really appreciated that effort that he made. And he said, but I do know that in just a few weeks, that mindset has to change as we get in the battle and the chase and what we have to do week in and week out. He said, but yeah, it's great to have great cars on a weekly basis. All right, really in the thick of the lap traffic here for leader Joey Logano in that yellow and red 22 car. That's going to hold him up right here. 32, J.J. Yaley looked like he waited on it a minute to let the leader pass underneath him. Yeah, that helped a lot. See Brad Kozlowski now having to deal with a lot of that same traffic to try and find a way to close ground on the Logano. Now that's what you hope that the driver that you're trying to hold off has as much difficulty as what you encounter. Actually, you hope that they're not as courteous to him yeah. as they were to you. A lot of people have gotten a lot of conversation about championship momentum and so on. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, Brad Kozlowski and Jimmy Johnson have had their bursts of victories this season. What about Joey Logano? Here's a guy with a couple of wins already this year. It seems like every week, if he's not contending for the win, he's up front somewhere, even if something might happen. And uh, somebody you better keep an eye on come September, October, November. Yeah, I'll say this team, and Joey Logano, he just made so much progress and, and matured into such a solid you know, race winning and I think championship winning driver. Right? It's not going to be long before he's going to be a real contender for this thing. Jamie? Andy, you know about this. The chemistry between a crew chief and a driver is everything, and that's what these guys have. They are a true team. They work together. Todd Gordon told me when they unloaded on Friday, Joey felt like he was at a different racetrack. He didn't know what direction to tell him to fix this car and make it better. So Todd Gordon said, we're going to focus on stability. We might lack speed, but we want this car to be balanced. Well, it has worked tonight. He's only been a tick tight all night long and as we've been watching this 22 car has been turning on a dime. Got his hands full right now Jamie uh, Logano trying to put a lap on Jeff Gordon Jeff the last car on the lead lap in 16th place and he's not going down easily and Kozlowski's made up some ground as Logano tries to find a way around Gordon. Yeah Logano got close to him off the on the exit of turn two had to get out of the throttle lost about half of his lead to Brad Kozlowski right there. Here comes Kozlowski in that red and white car right behind Logano. Yeah, he's trying to use the bottom of that track and get a little grip. This car's finally able to do some of that. He was not able to turn the car down like he is now in the last run. And when they come around next time, which will be in just a few seconds, there'll be 10 laps to go in the race. Lots of lap cars ahead of these leaders. And Kozlowski closing in. This is the real key here getting by this 24 car of Jeff Gordon who's just fast enough to keep him back there and put Logano in a very vulnerable position. He messes around much longer with him as he I think he might have gotten into the back of the 24 right there. He's going to have to decide to whether he's going to play offense or defense with the two car. You see he tried to get in the throttle hard right there and lost the rear tires a little bit. David Gilliland 38 car moves to the inside. So now Logano having to work his way around Gilliland still behind Jeff Gordon now with Marco Ambrose down to the inside lane in the nine. And the one good thing is that Gordon has enough speed right now that they're here keeping a little bit of a distance from Brad Keselowski. I think Logano though can just turn that car straight to the bottom. In his strength all night. These are lead lap cars. Jeff Gordon, 24. Jeff Burton, 14. All guy are no longer on the lead lap. Five to go. Laps down now. Mm 
You actually see Matt Kenseth coming back into the picture a little bit on the getting closer to the two car here. Don't think he's got enough time to get there. See Gordon finally pull over and let the 22 go. Classic move right there. Gave it his run to see yep. if he could get a caution yep. and stay on the lead lap. And oh, Matt Kenseth scraping the wall a little bit. Trying to make a run at it. Hang on, these final couple laps will go in a hurry. Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski in traffic, coming to the white flag. Big run by the two. Better right hurry. White flag. Final lap here at Bristol. Brad's going to try it. Not going to make it stick. Checkered flag and a win at Bristol to Joey Logano in the night race. Oh my God, that's awesome. Good work. Brad's right here. Awesome shot there. Same crew. Got it done here. Good calls on the box. NASCAR countdown. A feather in your cap, a race every driver wants to win. What you just heard and saw from Joey Logano sums that up pretty well. Victory Lane and post-race interviews coming up. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by Sprint. Count on America's newest network for better call quality and high-definition voice. Happy connecting from Sprint. KFC, the world's best chicken. How the UKFC. Goodyear, tires chosen by experts for superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. And Haynes Comfort Blend t-shirts and underwear. Haynes softest, most comfortable ever. 
Plenty of fireworks at Bristol Motor Speedway tonight. Now plenty of confetti at the conclusion of the night race at Bristol. And the winner's driven up onto the roof in Victory Lane. Our Victory Lane interview presented by Five Hour Energy. as we approach the chase. Well, we can win the thing. Uh, man, what a what a Shell Penzo Ford there. I wasn't sure uh, when I woke up this morning if we were a winning car or not. And then uh, Todd Gordon, he's a good salesman. And he pretty much sold me into thinking I had a winning car and uh, made some small adjustments on it all night and got uh, got our third win of the year. So what a year we're having. This has been so much fun. And the past you know six, seven races have been unbelievable. We've been, uh, we've been running up front, man. It's just been so much fun. And, uh, just got to thank Shell, uh, obviously Ford, Sprint, uh, everyone that helps out at Team Penske. Discount tire hurts. Um, man, this is such an auto trader, such an awesome race. This is one of the, I'm trying to catch my breath still. This is like one of the three biggest races of the year, I feel like, the Bristol night race. And to have this uh, in the record books with your name on it, it's just really, really cool. Joey, we aired a sit down last week and you talked about the fact that you didn't always have patience. How important were patience for you tonight to weave your way through the traffic? <laughs> important and then not important. You know, uh, on the restart there when we were six with tires, I said, I got to capitalize right now. Um, so I went as hard as I can, uh, raced the 20 really hard, just got everybody I could. And then, uh, you know, was trying to, um, you know, keep up with them <laughs> for a while. And the 20 was really fast. And then there at the end, I had something going wrong. I don't know if it was brakes or a uh, hub failing in the rear. But it started vibrating really bad and getting really loose. I'm like, oh, come on. I'm like, a couple more laps, a couple more laps. So, of course, there's always added drama at the end of it you don't want. But, um, you know, patience, like you said, it, it, it didn't come into play. And then when I was racing 24 there at the end, it, it did come into play. So, uh, just able to make it there at the end. Joey Logano has a good salesman on his side. Says they can win the championship, Alan. I don't disagree. They could win the championship. And for tonight, Joey Logano, our Goodyear Superior Performer. After scoring a win here at uh, Bristol that he had to work awfully hard for. Getting by Matt Kenseth in the late going and holding off his teammate Brad Keselowski to score his first win here at Bristol and his third of this season. Still more to come after the night race at Bristol where Joey Logano's victory lane celebration has just begun.
the fireworks, the flash bulbs, and the victory lane celebration. All after the checkered flag tonight here at Bristol in the Irwin Tools Night Race. And Joey Logano scoring his third win of the season. A Penske won two. Penske's 22 car won last night's NASCAR Nationwide Series race. And Brad Keselowski won Thursday's NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race. Although Brad owns that team himself, a Penske driver sweep of the racing weekend here in Bristol. Downstairs to dock. Well, Brad Kozlowski, Brad, take us through those last five or six laps where you're trying to reel in your teammate, Joey Logano. Joey just, uh, he ran a great race, and, uh, you know, we uh, we were really strong in that midsection, and then about three-quarters of the way through the race, we had a bad run, Joey and a couple of those other guys got by us, and we got it back a little better for that last run, Jerry, and the uh, Worth Ford Fusion was uh, about equal to Joey's. He just had a little bit of track position on me, and I felt like a couple times I was faster, a couple times he was faster, and... Uh, when I'd get right behind him, I'd get in the dirty air and just push too much to be able to do anything with him. And uh, that's what happened on that last lap. It just wouldn't stick. But, uh, boy, I wanted it to. I wanted to win for everybody on this team. But uh, my Penske won, too. It's something to be proud of. I know Roger's watching, and I'm sure he's uh, really happy. Well done by Brad Kay. Hard-fought third-place finish for Matt Kenseth tonight. Led 62 laps and uh, at times looked like maybe you had the car to beat. With about 65 to go, you guys debated on whether to stop. Some others came. You didn't. What was behind that decision? Yeah, I mean, that's the um, first time I didn't listen to Jason, so that wasn't good. So I just, um, uh, you know, I just knew that new tires for our setup we had tonight and what our car would do in traffic. I just knew clean air was going to be worth more than new tires. And, you um, you know, maybe we could have got tires and beat those guys. I mean, we'll never know. But on restarts, I just had such a hard time. And uh, I knew clean airs would cover up a lot of problems. So we missed it a little bit tonight. But overall, it's a good night for our Dollar General uh, 75th anniversary car. Um, man, I wanted to win that thing in the worst way, but I, I just couldn't hold them off. Strong run, though. Matt Kenseth, third. Nobody led more laps than Jamie McMurray tonight. But leader with 67 to go, the decision to pit. Looking back now, Jamie, how does that sit with you? Well, I see that Matt uh, Matt wasn't able to win stand out. And I don't I don't know what happened. Our car got really tight with about 100 laps to go. And we freed it up on the last pit stop, and it, it didn't really help. But really proud of, of everybody on our McDonald's Chevrolet. McDonald's has been in the sport for so long, and, and they've only won a few races. And I really thought tonight was going to be our night to, to put them back in victory lane. But uh, had a good car. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a hard racetrack to pass at. But when our car was good, it was it was a really fun track. So good night. Just uh, keep digging. Two to go. Can you make it at Richmond or Atlanta? Well, we talked earlier, and I, I thought tonight would be a good night to be able to win. And as we're running around there, I'm like, we have a legitimate chance to win tonight if we if we do everything right, like I said. And I don't feel like we did anything wrong. It's just that the as the track rubbered up more and more, it just didn't suit our car as much as it did other guys. And in the middle of the race, when I was lapping all these guys, I, I couldn't figure out why they were, you know, slowing down so much and then when my car got tied I was kind of in the same situation. Jamie okay, McMurray finishes eight tonight. All right Dave so with now just a couple of races to go for drivers who haven't won to get a place in the chase we see that uh, first of all is a log jam at the top Joey Logano joining the three wins this season club for the number one seed to run through the beginning of the championship and then down the bottom a lot of those guys with the zeros in the win column finished fairly close together in the standings. So Biffle, Boyer, Newman all gaining a little bit more ground on the cut line tonight. Yeah, but Kenseth probably really secured his spot with a good solid run tonight. And like I said, he didn't get the win, but that was a great finish. And that probably solidifies his position. Yeah, and we do know that two will make it in on points now because uh, there can only be two more winners. Uh, the possibility there, but big loser tonight there in that group. Casey Kane obviously having his issues with that right front. Casey Kane finishing 35th in this race tonight. Somewhere out there in all those bright lights are Rusty and Brad in the pit studio. <laughs> yes, sir, A.B. Uh, Rusty, when we started the night, you had four guys that you were concentrating on. Take advantage of this opportunity this evening. What happened? i tell you what. I, I was really taking a look at Clint Borer. We talked about Borer. We talked about Larson. We talked about Kenseth and Kane. All of them had problems. Nobody was able to get it done. Yeah. Kenseth with the guy. Got closest, Brad. Yeah. You know, another thing, what about Jeff Gordon? I mean, he was been hot as a firecracker. Now he's had a, a hot streak that has stopped. Yeah. I thought this guy was going to win the race, too, but he didn't. Yeah, Jeff had a good run going. He had some troubles, but he still has those three victories. So he's still got a lot of momentum. He can get back going when he goes on to Atlanta next week. So uh, not a bad evening. Not a great evening for Jeff because he could have won the race, but not a super bad uh, overall evening. Yeah, I mean, the guy's been hot all year long, and I guess uh, this particular track is the one he loves so much, and I thought Jeff would have been hotter here. But, yeah, you know, yeah. four guys missed that big 
big opportunity. We talked about it in Countdown, that this was their big chance to get it done. They didn't get it done. So yeah. now it's off to Atlanta. Atlanta, that's high tire wear. Anybody can win down there. The top lane's another lane at Atlanta that's kind of similar here to Bristol. Yeah. You got to run up top to run fast. So we'll see what happens. Only two races left, A.B. And they're going to be big. Uh, Big Brad, those two races are Atlanta and Richmond upcoming next for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in the next couple of weeks. Next weekend, it's a Sunday night race for the Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta, and then the Chase Grid decided at Richmond on Saturday night, September 6th. Uh, and then on into the final 10. Join us at all of those races, one uh, uh, the number at the bottom of the screen, uh, or nascar.com slash tickets. Be some great racing, some great weather in the fall, and uh, some real excitement, I think, with this new uh, elimination system to determine who this year's champion will be. When we started the night talking about how we thought that uh, this was going to be a rough, tough, difficult 500 lap race on these drivers. What did you see uh, at the conclusion? I think it was that as we interviewed most of these drivers, they were still pretty much out of breath and had had a little bit of time to catch up. It was a difficult night. We could see just how difficult it was in trying to negotiate. It was more lap traffic and making passes, uh, the difficulty of that. But I think we also saw another driver and team saying, got to watch us. We're going to be contenders when it comes to chase time. Joey Logano and his team certainly are going to be that. Yeah, I'm a little surprised we didn't see one of those bubble guys that need a win get it. I mean, Casey Kane ran good enough to win, and so did Jamie McMurray. It was such a disappointment the way he finished off. I, I was kind of surprised that we didn't see that, but I guess we see now why these guys win three races. They're good, and Joey Logano did a great job tonight. The opportunity for some of the drivers who were on that bubble to earn their way in. Rusty and Brad were talking about this a minute ago, passed tonight. So as you look forward to these final few races now with Atlanta next week and Richmond the week after, does any one of those drivers stand out to you as someone in particular to keep an eye on? Well, I think that the thing we're going to have to look at are those drivers 15, 16, 17, and 18 there uh, in particular at a place like Atlanta where you're going to be making some strategy calls with a lot of green flag racing. We're going to see some short pitting, and that could work to your advantage there and catch someone else maybe that, that tried that to get themselves in trouble where there might be a big swap in points. So you have to watch those drivers right there. How much are they willing to risk to get that reward for them? And again, we have to think about Kyle Larson and Casey Kane. We go to Atlanta. Those are uh, two guys that you think of can really race all over the track, and that place is going to be like that. So it could be a chance for them. And then, you know, when it comes down to Richmond, it'll be desperation then. Well, as the celebration continues in victory lane tonight here in Bristol, uh, the fender bend bent count, I lost track. Too many <laughs> tick marks on the paper to sort out.